Library District, District Board of Trustees <laughs> to order. It is at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, July 19th. July 19th, 2017. Diane, oh, would you please take the roll? Here. Carolyn. Here. Dennis. Here. Diane. Here. Patty. Here. Linda. Here. Kim. Here. All right, let's uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First thing on our agenda, as usual, is the consent agenda, and um, I noticed that at our place here we have some revised minutes. Um, Susan, could you tell us what the change from the minutes was? The ones that say revised, yes. 7, 19, 17. Uh, it's in bold there. What happened is at the last month's meeting, when we had the signage person, the, the person came, you guys made a motion to move that on the agenda, then he started talking. Then you made a motion to table it, but nobody ever made the original motion. You moved it. I did not. It, right. No. And, and so, it, right, <laughs> you moved to table it, is yes. what it turned out That's on the right. recording. Yeah. So, yes, so we have adjusted that. So it is now correct. All right. So, are those the, is that the only change the only to change. the yes. by 7 19, 17 minutes? Okay, all right. Uh, thank you for explaining that. Um, as you see in our consent agenda, we have three items on the consent agenda, A, B, and C. Does anyone want to remove any one of those three items from the consent agenda? I have some um, changes or additions to the um, minutes. So do you want to separate that from expenses, or how do you want to do that? Um, which minutes are you talking about? The 21st? The uh, June 21st minute? Public hearing or the regular? The regular board meeting. Um, all right. Well. Since we already discussed some changes, what were the changes that you wanted to um, bring to our attention? On page, on page six, um, under director's report, it says an update on the passport agency process was given. I would like to suggest we add a summary, which is what Dennis Walsh mentioned, that our minutes should include an accurate summary of what was discussed. Because there isn't any information there. Um, as I recall, Dennis Walsh said that we really just needed a very short statement as to what we discussed and didn't really have to have a lot of details. I do remember him talking about that. Uh, Actually, if you check the um, tapes, his exact words are an accurate summary. So we should have something in there. I mean, there's nothing listed about whatever she talked about. Okay, well, I mean, I basically just said we're stalled right now, so, but, I mean, that could be added. I think you you also address um, Mr. McCoola's comments, and, you you know, you expanded on where we are and who's in charge of what. You did say quite a bit. About passports? No, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong, it's not passports, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong thing. Okay, that's my mistake. So it's not an update for passport agency except for... That's right, you didn't say anything for that. That's my mistake. I, I misread it. So then we can drop down to um, Fandom Fest. That was another one that we didn't seem to have any details, but you did make a couple of comments there. Right, okay. I don't recall exactly what I said. It it's on the video. Right. Which, which area is it? Oh, it's um, well, under, it's under, under rails. Under rails. At this time, President Dunning. Oh, oh you're right, asking right, Ms. Lemke to report. Okay. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so you'd like, like a sentence to sum up what I had said? Is yes. That idea? It just it just helps us, you know, kind of know where we stand as we go through our minutes later. Well, as I recall, you did report in the event that we are going to have it, but yeah. I don't remember much beyond that. And then the last thing, um, I thought there was one more thing since I confused it with passport agency, but maybe not. Um, I just wanted to mention I had um, 
indicated a request. I said I would like to go on record requesting that any PowerPoint presentations be included in the board packet for board members to review in advance of the board meetings. And um, I also mentioned that it is currently a practice at the village. So we had a PowerPoint presentation from Mr. Krug, which we didn't have available. And then I know Greg provides us with many PowerPoint presentations. So I just want to go on record asking that you include them in our minute, our board packet, so we can review all that before we come and be better prepared. Okay, so we, we did get the PowerPoint from the roofing, I mean from the signage, right? You did get that, right? Yes, okay, I'm asking she that says, I go on record requesting that from now on. Okay, well, I, all right, if you want to make a motion later tonight, you can do that. Okay, I already did it last week. But we, didn't vote on whether or not, we did not vote on whether or not we all wanted that. So if you want to make that oh, motion. Oh, so you, you can, you're going to deny us having information? I'm not denying time. you. I'm asking you if you want to ask for it, please make a motion and we'll decide if we want to do that. So you, you can do that. Instead of just adding it. Well, I, I think it's something that everyone can vote on if they want to vote on. I think we waste our time on nonsense, but whatever whatever pleases you. Well, you know, that it's up to the board, not just to me. <coughs> so, all right, so I understand uh, that the uh, suggestion is, is that we report, uh, that we change the minutes to reflect on the rails that um, Susan Lentry did provide a report on Fandom Fest. Yeah, a brief yeah. summer. She's going to put in some details, right? No, I, I don't, I'm not telling her what to put in. I'm just telling Diane that you uh, did receive, or we all did receive from Ms. Lemke, a report on Fandom Fest. All right, so we have the minutes now. We have the minutes of the public hearing, and we have the payment of the bills. All right, do I have a motion? to approve the minutes of the tentative budget and appropriations public hearing of June 21st, 2017, to approve the revised minutes of the regular board meeting of June 21st, 2017, and to approve payment of the bills for operating expenses of $257,999.65, payroll expenses of $280,069.11, and special reserve expenses of $11,763.00, and 34 cents for a total monthly expense of $549,832.10. And so motion. Is there a second? Second. So we make the motion. Me. Yeah. All right. Any discussion? Second. Second. Yeah. Second. Okay. Any discussion on that? Uh, just a Yes. Uh, just a quick point. Yes. Um, I think since we don't have the language in the uh, minutes, the revised language in the minutes, it would probably be the form of out for approval until the next meeting. I don't know if they really can. I think they have to be approved for 30 days. Um, I, since, I think since we have the revised minutes in front of us and we're looking at them, the ones that are just revised as we discussed, well, right, which one are you talking about? The ones, that, the, the changes that Susan put in? No, the, uh, the changes that. Uh, Carolyn requested. Okay, I, yeah. but I think I just told Diane exactly mm -hmm. how to amend them. Just oh, to, exactly how to do that. So, uh, are there any other comments or questions? All right. Okay, may I have a roll call? Okay, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. All right, thank you. Well, we will now move on to that section of our meeting for uh, public comment. I think we do have some requests for public comment. Okay, so we do have a few speakers. Um, I don't know if you're in trouble. Uh, when addressing the board, speakers will be limited to five minutes for registered individuals. Uh, all speakers must maintain a professional demeanor, of course. Um, Mr. Marcula, Mr. Marcula, would you like to make some comments? And, and please step over where the, the we can capture you on the video camera. I don't know what you're yeah. You can uh, stand right there. over here. That's Will that be sufficient? Okay. You need a podium. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, I want to talk about uh, 
some perspective of where we stand in Niles. Uh, Cook County leads the nation in population loss. 66,200 people left last year. One of the main reasons is high property taxes. Property taxes in Cook County are the second highest in the nation. High taxes reduce the value of real estate being taxed. With high taxes, employers leave and so do jobs. Lower populations lead to lower federal and state funding. Every decision to spend money by the library results in higher real estate taxes. It's the spending that drives the tax rate. The board ultimately decides on. So when you decide on your tax rate, it's going to be on every decision you made at every meeting on how much you're going to spend. I see a big waste in taxpayer money on the sign proposal. With the lighted sign on the corner and the letter sign on the south side of the buildings, patrons have had no trouble finding the library or the entrance to the parking lot for 50, 60 years as long as this library's been here and that big sign wasn't there that long. I've been here quite a while. The extravagant proposal didn't just magically appear. Someone solicited this and I asked whose idea this is to, to go way out. Maybe it's the salesman that came in here, I don't know, is he the music man or whatever. Uh, this, it, it seems like this is an ego trip by the board and the management. It, it's like animals needing to secure and mark their territory. My suggestion is to limit sign expenditures to updating the lighted sign on the corner and updating letter sign on the south side of the building at a cost of about $60,000. This signage has been adequate until now and any more than this is just wasteful spending of taxpayers' dollars and irresponsible. The library has already spent thousands of dollars as a result of the name change, from stationary to repainting the van. And I have no idea how much money that is, and maybe somebody here knows. Um, all government bodies need to wisely manage their spending. They need to run like a business, a business owned by, by the taxpayers. If wasteful spending isn't controlled and the operation is not run efficiently, uh, it's overstaffed and the board and management needs to take account of that and make corrections. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Mercula. I hope you stay for the presentation on the signage uh, later this evening. I will. Um, all right, we have one other request for public participation. Mr. Stephen yourself. Would you like to step over here, sir? Thank you. Um, glad to be here again. Um, I do uh, reflect a lot of what Joe just recently said, but uh, I do like the current sign that's out there, not the banner that's over, the, the older logo, but I, I think we can save some money by designing the sign similar to how it already is. And I mean, while the graphics are nice for the new logo, there's no, I don't see anything really unique about it besides the uh, the, the graphic of the outside of the building. Now, I mean, there there's a lot that uh, that can be done to, to help save the cost of all the signage. I mean, there's there's other materials that can be used that I hope uh, is discussed uh, either tonight or in the future. And I I just think that. Uh, there's there's way there's there's way too much money being spent on this, but at the same time, I I don't see as many bookshelves in the library, and that really concerns me. I think the money being spent on this could actually be spent on acquiring more literature, especially literature we don't have, and it doesn't need to be limited to children's books and picture books. I really think a lot of uh, history books are needed, and while we do have a, a vast uh, uh, database, I guess, of, of books, I, I think uh, we need to look more into exactly how we're using the space, because I do see a lot more open spaces here, which is nice, but I do notice that the board also talks about having problems with people coming here to meet and do business. so. If we encourage more people to come here specifically to pick up literature and read, I think that'll be a better uh, step into, a, I guess, a newer direction for the library. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.
Um, that appears to be all the names on the uh, list for public comment. Mm -hmm. um, would you like to say anything? Sure, thank you. <coughs> Thank you. May I sign it also? I'm sorry, I'm late. Oh, go on, go for it. I'm going to Thank you so much. Um, yes. You want to go for No, you go ahead. Okay. Would you, would you uh, say your name and, and spell your sure. name? Sure, Myrna Zalesny, Z-A-L-E-S-N-Y. I'll make it very brief. Everybody get their tapes going? Did yeah. anybody yeah. talk about this yet? Because I, again, I'm sorry for being late. I found it interesting that our Niles Public Library, <coughs> just, and I understand there's things with percentages and things, but my, I, in, uh, the Village of Niles is only $78 more it runs an entire village <laughs> than the library. Um, the Water Reclamation District, who takes care of all of your water needs, and we're fighting with them and paying exorbitant things, they are less than us by about $40 on my tax bill. I find it interesting. We have one building. We, the, Chicago, the Park District, while I understand, does take in revenue. I also understand that they have multiple buildings with multiple things. My daughter works for the Park District. There's tons of kids there working all the time with everything. But I find that their bill is also less. So I guess I'm wondering, this is a library. This isn't like a small country. We really need to start thinking about how we're spending our money. You don't need everything. I want a lot of things, but I don't need everything. And we need to have you guys start looking at that and thinking about what do we really have to have versus, God, this is my wish list, I finally got on the board, and I'm going to do all these things in the next year or two. Think about what you're doing to the people of Niles. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, go ahead. Thank you. And, and if you would state your full name and sure. spell your last name. Sure. 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 I'm Dave Caraboda, 8049 Oak Niles. As I make my comment, I want you to keep in mind three figures, okay? First figure is 71,064. Second figure is 51,914. Third figure is 21,276. You know, <clears throat> our state's a mess, as we know. Uh, Senate Bill 1, which is pending right now, which the governor wants on his desk, which is being held back by the Democrats. They're stalling until August. What it does, it takes school funding and approve school funding so the schools can open. They want to wait till the very last minute because there's millions of dollars that that bill, one part of it, is going to divert from the school funds to fund pensions. Millions of dollars from all over the state. They're going to take out of the, out of the schools so they can't pay their front, they're supposed to go to the front line teachers to fund pensions. We're a mess. Our bond rating is not accurate. It's a mess. It's delayed, but it, it's, it's subject to being downgraded. We have to stop somewhere. We can't say it's Springfield. When Springfield gets their act together, one mayor told me and went, on, and went on the record and said, when they get their act together, we'll get our act together. We can't do that. Okay? We cannot spend this money. We don't have it. We're printing it. You take 167,000 in signs <clears throat> against the taxpayer money, you take that times five because you pull it out of the economy. And, the, and it rotates through the economy. That's a well over six, well, just multiply it. It's well over $700,000. You can't do that to the Niles economy. We have to stop somewhere. And if we have the money, you have reserves. Great. If you have a lot in reserves, give the money back. Okay? Don't do it. Don't spend this kind. I don't need a fifty thousand dollars banners on my building, my my library to tell me this is the library. Okay? Anybody who lives around here follow we know. Okay? I don't need one hundred and sixty seven thousand in signs for your records. Comes out to be seventy one thousand sixty four Mars bars. Okay, 122,000 is 51,000 
914 Mars bars, and the 50,000 banners is 21,276 Mars bars. So if our standard is, how many candy bars does it really add up to? A lot. I warned you a year ago this was going to happen. I warned you a year and a half ago this was going to happen. And it's bad. And there are changes going on with elections. There's people being elected to change this from the grassroots level. That's the only way the state's going to straighten out. There's a grassroots level. This is my previous paralegal move to Indiana in December. And this is this week. I lost another very long-term client to the state of Florida. Not to retire, but to get a job, move there, buy a home, and live there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. And so those are all the requests for public comment that we have uh, today. And therefore, we'll move on to the treasurer's report. So do you have a report for us? I do. So uh, I've got it printed, but I think I'll, I'll walk through it uh, verbally before I pass out to the other one. So it's not too distracting. So if we turn to page 25, uh, uh, well, first of all, before I start, uh, June is our, our, our the last month of our fiscal year, uh, but the statements are not finalized. That is done in the audit, uh, and then the final figures, the adjustments are applied during the audit, and the final figures are always given to us in November. So these are uh, the final month but it is tentative based on the audit. It's, you know, all right, page 25 is our balance sheet. Uh, I think that's fairly straightforward, unless anybody has any questions. The only thing I did want to point out on this one is we had about $96,000 uh, in prepaid expenses, and these are uh, expenses paid for the new fiscal year. Uh, mostly it's insurance uh, bills, some of them are programming fees of which they require advance payment. But that's marked? It's marked that. here because the money went out here. So that would account for the things where I saw that it's like 200% or 300% is situations like that? Uh, well, you would have to point out the specific. Okay, because I, I will. I'll look. Sure. Because I saw it, I went, whoa, yeah. baby. All right. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, that was all I had on the, on the balance sheet. Um, turning to page 26 of our income statement. Overall, the expenditures are at or under budget in every category, except the employee fringe benefit. That reflects the deferred compensation payment to IMRI. Uh, and uh, I would have to say the library should be recommended. At, uh, it should be kind of commended for maintaining the expenditures to the budget in months. Uh, page 26. Our revenues are a little higher than budgeted. The fines are off, though, by half, which is actually a good thing for our patrons. That's due to the change toward our automatic renewals and circulation. We also still haven't received our per capita grant funds from the state of Illinois. So we're still waiting on that one. Uh, salaries have been maintained at 99% of the budget. So good job there. Page 27. Uh, materials. That's at 100%. Some line items are slightly over, some slightly under, but the overall category is at 100, so that's not over budget. Operating expenses, uh, $8,200 lower than budget. A largest uh, variance uh, due to some costs we had uh, in the change way we handle uh, uh, high value items. We had some theft issues that we're still working toward uh, through, and uh, that resulted for that. Uh, software costs were lower due to decisions uh, to shorten some licenses and negotiate better prices. Good for that. Now we are also expecting a five to ten thousand dollar cash back from the E-rate program on internet charges. This is a new program for us. It's provided significant equipment savings of thirty thousand dollars when we upgraded the access point to the library, which is great, right? Uh, it's also it's a federal program that defrays cost of technology and communications for nonprofits and small government agencies. So we have to commend uh, Rick uh, for a lot of uh, work on that. Rich, 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 Rich uh, our IT uh, director, is he director, manager, head of, head of, for a lot of work getting that program uh, uh, put in place. And it's not just for this year, but it's an ongoing program. So that's that's uh, that's a wonderful thing. 
The four programming items taken as a whole are about $3,500 under their collective budget. Uh, page 28, moving along. Uh, general administrative category is 12% under budget due to lower spending and copiers, less patron usage. Uh, professional development, legal fees, consultants, promotional, they're all lower due to cost controls. Our telephone is over budget, but we expect money back for the e-rate program from this line. -up. So ultimately that will be under when we get that money back. Okay. Page 29. This is probably what you're referring to, Patty. Actually, decision. it was on 28. Oh, okay, 28. Yes, uh, it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down. It's 334%. Uh, professional collection. Ele professional collection. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the year to date budget was $1,000. Mm -hmm. The year to date I, actuals is 3000 So yeah. it is percentage wise. So it's over. Over, but. Yeah. Actual dollars. It, actual dollars is not huge, but it's like, whoa, when you see 334%, you're going, whoa, maybe. Well, that's the problem with dealing with percentages rather than actual numbers. Very often people will cite percentages and not deal with the real number. So I, if, if we want to comment on that next month, or if you have something to say about that particular one, Greg, I haven't even uh, look at that particular one. I think we all right. We'll uh, address that next Thank time. Thank you. Not a problem. All right. Page 29. Okay. So we did have the employee fringe benefit, which is out of over budget, overwhelmingly due to our contribution by IMRF early, earlier this year. But everybody should realize that that contribution ultimately saves the library $150,000 annually due to avoiding the interest. So the, the, we had to pay this money as we we're um, obligated to IMRF. The choice was paying it now or paying it later. Paying it later would have resulted in that much more interest. So paying it now saves that money. So it was a fiscally responsible thing to do that the board voted on. Uh, majority not, it wasn't a uh, total board vote, but it was a uh, majority voted on that. Retirement is $23,000 under budget. Health insurance is $50,000 under budget due to lower expected plan enrollments. Utilities are lower due to a mild winter. That's great. And if I may, yes, um, yes, has done a great deal of work of swapping out light fixtures in the building over ah. the course of the last year to try to reduce the cost of the electric right. bill. He's done a great job on that. Yeah. So that's overall. Um, my observation on the uh, income statement, page 30, is uh, shows us to be uh, at or under budget, or you know, for, for some of these items. Okay, um, so I do have a comment about our budgeting process since we're on finances. We are now starting our first month of the year financially, and this is the time to reflect on our budgeting process and to request changes or request additional um, uh, reports now rather than in April or May or June when it's probably too late. So really take time to, to think about what you, you might want to see for a company. Uh, make a motion, uh, present it to the board, we'll discuss it, and we'll see how we go from there. Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm so you're looking for us to make that decision now? I'm looking for you to think about the budgeting process as we move forward through the year, about what you might want to see at the end. Because at the end, it's, sometimes it's a little difficult to do it. If we start off from the beginning, thinking about what, what other reports, I don't know what other reports we might want. We're, yeah, we're, I, yeah, I, don't yeah, I, I just, I mean, are you looking for us to give you an answer? Today? Well, I guess I'm not looking for the new uh, people so much, as, right. since you haven't been through it, but okay. the others who have been through it. All right. All right, so we did have a number of uh, items from our last financial report last month that I do want to uh, address. Uh, there was a comment, uh, there was a suggestion made to the staff to provide the financial reporting with an up-to-day of the meeting figures for the budget consideration. You want to explain that our accounting system is a batch system. Throughout the month, transactions are gathered and put into the system at the end of the month during the closing process. It's not interactive. Uh, we need to have some sort of a, 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 an interactive system in order to provide that day-to-day -day expenditures. If any board member feels that we need that, I'm, I would recommend that you do uh, 
cost-benefit analysis, you, you bring it forward to the board, you make a proposal, let's talk about it, let's decide as a board and vote on it. Um, and that's the way we request changes to software staff procedures. But if you, you look at our, our, our report on a monthly basis, we are very uh, accurate and uh, most of our obligations are contractual or uh, salary related and as it gets closer to the end of the year, it's highly unlikely that we're going to be significantly over budget on any item that doesn't appear as we're going along would have to be some sort of a significant expenditure that we didn't realize and we would all be made aware of that as we, as we normally are anyway. Okay, uh, another comment was made on negotiating practices of the library. Uh, I just want to point out that we do a lot of negotiating as the uh, library moves along. As the subscription prices uh, databases are renewed, staff scrutinizes the quotes. Uh, we check prices when we buy. We, we look for different uh, avenues for expenditures uh, so that we can get the best price. Um, example was our fringe benefits. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, originally it was around $23,000. Uh, that was uh, negotiated to about half of the opening bid. Uh, again, the IMRF suggestion about that resulted in quite a substantial savings to the library. Hardware software is all negotiated. Um, we were able to save 60 grand on Microsoft licenses. Uh, Microsoft allowed us to use their educational licensing program, which reduced the cost to zero. Uh, so there are quite a few uh, ways that the library does uh, obtain uh, lower costs throughout the year. So, so if I could answer. Yes. So from a procurement uh, perspective, is, is the negotiation done by the department? Is it done by uh, you, or is it done by uh, how, how, is, how is the negotiation done? If I was to work here, when I negotiated, if I was in charge of software, how do, how do you go about doing it? I know how I do it in, in, in the business world as a procurement department that typically you know, we go to. So. It's different people. Diane actually does a fair amount of negotiating. Uh, for example, somebody sent through a chair request last week, mm -hmm. and she had a previous quote on it, and the previous quote from several months ago was considerably lower, and she got them down to the low quote. So she does that on an absolutely on the, the person that handles the databases will go back and forth with them on the databases. Um, Rich handles a lot of the software things. Greg is handling the um, insurance things, and so, you know, I, I think it's people, it's always funny to me to hear the public talk about the libraries if we're these huge spenders because I find the library staff to be extremely frugal by and large, like almost too frugal sometimes. And um, so I, I think everybody does their very best to get the best prices on everything that's purchased. And it's in what the hands of whoever is in charge of that particular chunk of the budget. Okay. All right, uh, we had an, uh, an expectation was expressed that the library staff obtain prior board approval before spending $150 for a consultant. I reviewed our Board of Trustees bylaws and it showed that in Section 10, Bids and Contracts, it states, and I'll quote, the library director shall present recommendations for advanced approval of purchases in excess of $5,000 to the board. Normal purchase of books, periodicals, other library materials are not included in the requirement of this approval. So according to the above bylaws, the $150 payment to the consultant was clearly within the range allowed. There is no specification in the bylaws for exceptions to the rule for specific budget categories. If any board member wishes to change the bylaws, uh, it should be listed in a month agenda for discussion and consideration, and we can vote on that. There was one last observation that the board treasurer is only reading Greg's report. A review of our board of trustees bylaws shows that in section 8, Duties of Officers, Letter D, Treasurer. It reads, Treasurer shall keep and maintain the accounts and records of the district during his or her term of office. To assist in these duties, the Board shall employ the services of a qualified accountant who is responsible to the Board for maintenance of financial records and reports as required by governmental agencies, tax audits, uh, reports, etc. The Board shall uh, annually employ a certified public accountant to perform an audit for the Treasurer's records. 
In Section 6, letter E, the order of business at a regular meeting includes number 5, the Treasury Report. There are no specifications listed as to the type of financial report provided to the Board by the Treasurer nor its content. No other uh, specifications are listed as to any other specific duties of the Treasurer. It's evident that there's a great latitude given to the Treasurer as to the method of filling the duties for the position. As to the comment that I'm only reading Greg's report, I take strong exception to this depiction. I rely on Greg to depict, to indicate in the by, uh, as indicated in the bylaws, to provide me with the report with each month's financials, financials, which I then use as a basis for my report. After I remove, uh, review them, the financials, I create my own report, highlighting what I believe the board would like to take note of. Before doing this, I review the exp expenditures, he has follow-up explanations, for items I'm unsure on. Uh, un I see nothing in the bylaws that directs me to do other than what I am doing. When we elected our water officers, I had noted that no other board member expressed a desire to be the treasurer's position. If any board member now feels they will do a better job as treasurer, I offer them the opportunity to speak up. We can take a re-vote on the position and abide by the board's decision. Um, I think you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. I, 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 you know. Okay, I'm waiting. <laughs> Nobody's speaking up, so I'll continue as treasurer. If you're finished, I have a couple questions. Absolutely. So um, for our year end, and since I hole punched my pages and I don't see the page numbers, where did we end for the end of the budget for this year? What did we show? I know you went line by line, but what's uh, the end of the Page 30 is the end of the uh, our budget. So, so we ended at what? What is your specific question? What do you mean? What, do we what, what did our year end budget end at? Are we. Um, the expenditures or the actual. Are we or? under or are we over budget for the year? We are 5% uh, over for the year, primarily due to the IMRF thing. I think okay. almost so, exclusively, due exclusively oh, I see due it. to the IMRF. Thing. Right, if we took that IMRF payment out, we'd be uh, definitely under by 600000 or so. I, I just wanted to mention, I believe that our budget this year. 15, 16, 17 year included an additional $800,000. Did that hit our um, revenues this year? I believe that was the that, year. Can you give me more detail? Didn't we raise the um, levy, $800,000 a year ago, so we would receive that money this year, correct? So was that also in our budget? So um, it wasn't last year, it was the year prior. That okay. we it. So when you're comparing this year to last year, it's so then the request was fourteen fifteen. It hit our budget fifteen sixteen, so it wasn't part of our budget this year. I thought it wasn't that long ago. So it was made the year before, it was made two years ago. Mm -hmm. We increased the levy eight hundred thousand dollars, or the board did. Um, uh, so it would have uh, impacted. Uh, 15, 16, as well as 16, 17. A year ago, there was no increase. The uh, the tax levy was completely flat when compared to the previous year. So, if you're looking at last year versus you know this year and such, uh, we have uh, we have excess revenue of about two hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars on the property tax line. Uh, with that. What will happen to that during the audit process as we true up those accounts is that that will probably decrease because for all intents and purposes, we should be flat for the most part compared to last year. Okay, I, was, my, I guess I was hoping with an additional 800000 we would have been able to hold on to some of that money, but we still are, are short on our budget. We still overspent. Well, that's primarily to do with the IMR right. payment that was not budgeted. That $2 million was not budgeted. It was certainly so, uh, an extraordinary you know, one-time expense. Obviously, that's going to have a uh, negative well, impact. On like I said, it's something we should have planned for, but I, I have well, a couple of questions. Well, it was unbudgeted, Carolyn. We couldn't plan for it. We didn't know it. Was it was unbudgeted. I know it was unbudgeted. That's, we, it was something we shouldn't have just thrown out there, okay? Because we, we, well, we I don't think we thrown out there. But we've already gone over this. Can well, I well yes, we have gone over this many, many okay. times, so why are you bringing this up again? Well, you're the one who's taking the stage. I'm just trying to ask three questions. So I want to thank you for bringing up the fact that our staff um, goes out of their way to lower any purchasing prices that they submit to vendors. Um, I just want to make sure everyone understands this all arose because 
I was questioning why it seemed in Greg's presentation that as a library it wouldn't be possible to cut our budget by 10% because there'd be all these problems and the way he looks at cutting 10% and the way I look at cutting 10% I'm sorry, really Carolyn, I'm going to have to stop. Carolyn, I'm going to have to stop you. Do you have a question on the financial report or do you so, have a question on the budgeting process? I have a question. I, I'm commenting on your comments. The next thing you brought up that um, we don't have a system in place to tell us where we are to date with our budget because we wait till the end of the month before we enter system. everything. Yeah, it's a batch system. So Greg you know what a batch system is? So yes, yeah, so Greg Pritz in the past was able to determine where we were to date and that we were going to go over because of certain expenses because he worked all this out on his own. Correct? That's how he was able to provide that information. I'm not really sure what you're talking about. I don't know my request, I've been on this board my request. We've had, excuse me, let me finish if you would, please. We've always had this type of statement that we have right now that tells us where we are at the end of each month. And I think it's very common for all boards to do that. Um, so I, I think that gives us a very good picture of where we are in terms of expenses and revenue that we receive by the end of the preceding month. And that, that's what we've done every month, and I think that's what most boards do, too. Well, and in the past, I've asked Rick certain questions, and that was one of them, to find out where we were before the year end. And usually he was able to ascertain where we were, what, what outstanding debts we would have. But according to... Um, Trustee Spadoni, we can't do that. So that's fine. So we can't it's a, do that. It's, it's something we've done. Right, 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 right. Don't say that's okay. Let's just yeah, go on. Uh, no, but I'm just saying this is where the contradictions are coming well, in. Carolyn, okay. you're making an accusation, and then and then you're moving on and leaving the accusation here, and it's really not fair. Well, Mr. Spadoni just said we can't do this. I said we cannot give a day-to-day -day accounting of the exact expenses because the batch. Is accumulated at the end of the month. Okay, I just wanted to share with you I was able to get that information in the past, but we can certainly move on. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that's true. You're, you would have you to, weren't here. Well, you would have to prove that to me. I'm, I'm saying Okay, I don't I'm know so sorry, true. but you know, we can't waste our time on that. But I, I would have to agree to with you on you that we shouldn't waste our time on that. And then back to the passport check um, of $150. Yes, I agree, it's a small amount. Having a passport agency in this library was a a detailed discussion. There was a lot of concern about whether it would even be viable, if it would cost us more money than we would make. I was shocked to find out that a librarian at Skokie who had a previous job was paid $150 just to share information with us. It kind of just caught me off guard. I just felt like we should be able to pick up the phone and call people that are in the same Carolyn, I situation think it was more than right. picking up the phone. She was she hired as a person. consultant. Yeah, she was hired as a consultant. Well, I didn't know. And, and, and you know what? So she was hired as a consultant. I hope we can get a copy of that report of her information. Because I think we still want to talk about passport, the passport agency. I've gotten a lot of information just from the local area here about all that is going on with that. And okay, when we come up with the, the passport agenda item, then we'll talk about it. So but what I'm saying is, um, I was just taken back that we had to pay someone to give us information. Well, and, I've yet very to see, and I've yet to see a report from that consultant. I would love to know what she shared with us. Um, Why don't you bring it up during other... Yeah. Yeah. Um, she came in person. She looked at our spaces. She offered advice in person as to what would work and what wouldn't. And then I reported on what she had said at the meeting following her visit, and if you recall, I told you that she said that most of my ideas were not going to work, and that I had to completely rethink it. So that was not a written report. I did not ask her for a written report. I don't want to pay her for a written report. But she did come and spend her time with us. She also has been very generous about, she has a very in detailed website that where she offers a great deal of information for free, but she also talks to Athena on, on the phone. She's been very generous about with her time. But I did want her to come in, in person because she had a lot of practical hands-on experience and she did in fact help us not make a mistake. So oh, buying furniture, using some space, right, I get it. Right. I was more concerned about the passport agency and whether or not it's a viable choice right now based on what's going on in the area, but that's fine. 
All right, let's move fun. on. Uh, I just have one question to pose out the Treasury's report. The audit, um, when would we be receiving that, the audit? When will that usually be on our agenda? Which uh, month? Traditionally, it's been the November meeting. Okay, uh, there is a uh, uh, There is a filing due date. I believe it's uh, like December 10th or December 15th mm -hmm. uh, for their laws. Mm -hmm. So they have to have it uh, reviewed and approved and accepted by the board uh, at the November meeting. Okay. All right. I know that at the November meeting, uh, either at or before the meeting, we get a copy of the audit. Yes. So, right, just prior to the if possible, if we could get that ahead of time, that yes. would be helpful. All right. Let's move on to the director's report. Yes. Uh, All right. The first thing I'm going to send around is a packet of. I got a quick question. Sure. When, when do we talk about any of the checks or anything? Is that kind of way around? Oh, we can talk about it. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Okay, no problem. I wasn't quite sure. I wasn't okay. quite sure I was going to sure. I don't know. So I did uh, just a just couple to, um, just, just for information, we could have done that um, when taking number C out of the consent agenda. So that's one place you can raise it if you I want to do that in the future. C. Um, but you can, agenda? Right. Yeah. 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 right. So you can do it then, okay. but um, again, you can uh, ask a question right now about it too if you wish. Okay, okay. Yeah. I can care less. <laughs> okay. care. I just wonder what the, I wonder what some of the things are for. You know, just uh, you know, as I go through, I, I just some okay. of the things just can't. Sir, sure. do you want to uh, direct us to a certain page that you're? Yeah. So it'd be uh, the first one was on page twelve in regards to uh, the new logo, and I wasn't sure. Is, is that just for you know, is that we're going to talk about the new stationery? Is uh -huh. Sorry, or, or uh, so like vendor, six down. One, two, three, four. Okay. That's the vendor. Middle center. Uh, it's, uh, oh, I see. New logo. Yeah. Oh, new logo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, that's the one. Yeah. yeah, so that was to replace the strip on the van that had the library name, just that one strip, and the part on the sign tape. The, the, the oh. graphics on the sign tape. Yeah. So it was all lined up. Oh, on the yeah. corner. On the yeah. corner, right. It's those two. Tall. Six, is that the temporary yeah. sign on there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. There those may have also been other things in there, but those are the two I recall. Those are the major ones. Okay. So the van and then something out, out the front. It's not the one that was across, going across the front, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that, I think it was that, although that was uh, a lesser. Uh, that was uh, uh, probably a cheaper piece than, uh, than the other two pieces that you mentioned. Okay, so that wouldn't have been an inclusive. That could be just something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I see what you're saying. There's two at the same price. It's right. like a twenty-three thousand dollars. Yeah, they but they're two separate things. Yeah. So, uh, Dennis, just uh, just to be clear, uh, the total charge to HP uh, from HP was just eleven thousand seven sixty-three thirty-four for one time. Okay. Um, and if you remember, this is you know this is part of the issue of producing or you know producing or an ad hoc report. Uh, because one of those lines got, uh, the accounts payable line got printed in there, and, uh, even though I tried to exclude them all. Oh, okay, so, so okay. it should so just be the one. It should just be the one. Ah, uh, that's a big deal. Same check number. Yeah, it is the same check number. I didn't realize that either. And, of course, if you know if you have any question or any doubt, you're more than welcome to. No, I just, you know, it helps you better understand. Uh, I'm sorry, Greg, why does that happen? I see a number of times the same check is printed twice. Well, so uh, look at uh, look at Ingram Library Services, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what what this is what this report does is it takes the check stub and it, and it prints the check stub. But I have to marry it to like a total uh, check amount. So Ingram Library Services, we gave them one check for seventeen six forty four ninety one. They provided library materials to us. If you look to uh, the columns that are approximately in the center, you see a number of different charges: one hundred fifty four ninety six, forty one ninety five, thirty fifty one. Oh, I Those see. Those are the it's separate the it always yeah. separate them. Okay. Uh -huh. I see. So. So there's yeah, like on the on page twelve, there's quite a few of those. Yeah. So that's appropriate. But when you look at the HP, it breaks up to the same thing. The HP repe yeah. repeated itself, and you can tell because you know it includes the entry to uh, special reserve accounts payable. And so you'll recall that last month, uh, Greg was explaining that we didn't want to stop giving you the bank register report, even though it doesn't yeah. have quite as much detail on it, because it is the accurate report. Yeah, this and it's, yeah it's, a hand, it's a hand report from yeah. the no, I, you know, from yeah. the and, and he answered my question, Great. so I'm, I'm in good shape. And my last one, and, and I know it's just a tiny fee, uh, it's on page 22, uh, being one, two, three, four, on down, just it's a light a finance charge and late fee. I yeah. mean, just are, we, are they charging us because we're not doing electronic, or are we? No. Uh, so here's uh, here's what happened with Visa. We sent them a check. Yeah. And the check uh, didn't have the account number on it. Okay. So they got upset. And they sent it back. And then they charged us 100, 12763 finance charges. So we paid the finance charges on the check yeah. to make sure that we didn't incur any further finance charges. But subsequently, in the last few days, uh, we called and said, hey, what are you guys doing? And so they'll be issuing a, a credit for that in... Uh, well, God bless you, because I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, said I, I, I know it was like $127, but I'm... No, it's not. No, no, we don't pay, no, pay, 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 pay finance yeah. charges. Okay. Okay. We don't do that. Okay. That was it. Greg, can I just ask one more question about that AP um, notation? In the future, if it's a double line item, it'll show the check, it'll always say accounts payable, so we'll know, right? I just don't want you to think that the report is problematic. I mean, we'll know if we see accounts payable. Yeah, uh, well, I try to clean the, all the accounts payable uh, charges out. Um, it's hard to do sometimes. No, no, I understand. Because different funds will show up. Well, I'm saying this is fine. I don't mind having Good. to see this rather than lose the report. I get it. Good. All right, thanks. All right, uh, unless there are any other questions about the Treasurer's report, we'll move on to the Director's report. Susan, all right. I was going to say. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, in my written report, I gave you guys uh, a little information about the new writing station that we have in Kid Space, um, and a little picture of the little mailbox and everything. And so the head of your service has actually copied some of the pieces of mail that we have gotten through that mailbox, and so I was just 
she scanned them, and I didn't want to put this many pieces of paper in the board packet because it's a lot of pieces of paper, but the, um, I just thought I would pass them around the table if you wanted to kind of see this some of that. This is the little blue yes, mailbox. Those were all delivered through the little blue mailbox there. So I thought that was extremely cute. My second thing is um, I have a survey here from United for Libraries. That is the division of American Library Association for you guys, for the trustees. Advocates, friends, and foundations, they want one of you to fill out a survey for them. And I wondered if anybody would like to volunteer. They don't want it for multiple people, so I didn't want to send the link out to everybody, but is anybody willing to do What's that? What's it for again? Um, it, what they want to do is an email I got today, or maybe, oh, maybe, okay. yeah, it was for me. Um, would you please forward this email to the person who is best suited to answer on behalf of your board? Uh, it is a survey to, for library trustees to benchmark basic library board demographics and procedures and to chronicle how boards advocate for their libraries. Anyone willing to fill that out? Uh, I'll fill that out. Is that an online survey? It, it is. I will send you the link tomorrow. Okay. All right. Thing number three. Um, in my director's report, I told you uh, briefly that, I had, that we had reworked our... Um, performance review because we wanted to handle the raises a little bit differently. So um, the way we're doing it, it, last year every person got just a flat raise. Everybody got exactly the same amount, whether they had a fantastic review, a mediocre review, anybody that had a bad review, of course, doesn't work here anymore. But um, but yeah, anybody that everybody was treated exactly the same. So this year I really thought um, I would like to experiment with trying merit increase. And so we have, everybody's going to get the cost of living, increase, which is 2.1% this year, which is considerably higher than it's been the last few years. But everybody will get the 2.1 so that their salary keeps pace with the cost of food and the cost of rent and things like that. But they then can earn additional money by doing some of these things. Uh, and I met and with um, well, a little over half of the staff last week, and I explained what their opportunities were for doing more things. And it's not just going to be on the basis of, yay, you've got a great review, so you're going to get more. It's going to be that they actively try to do more on behalf of the library. So the general categories of things that we are asking them to do are fall under community engagement. So if somebody walked in the 4th of July parade, if somebody is working our table tomorrow at the Bike Niles thing, um, if they go out to the schools, like when we do, you know, at open houses at the beginning of the year, We'll send one of the, the school liaison goes, but then off on a circulation clerk will go to do library cards for people. Anything out in the community, that's an opportunity to, to earn a little more. Uh, participating in continuing ed opportunities. Um, reading job-related or job-related, job-related or uh, library-related websites, reading professional journals, attending webinars, doing trainings. Um, anything like that that's to build up their uh, knowledge in their own area. And it does not have to be strictly library related. Dave, for example, might do a training that was more building related in his job. So that would be an opportunity for him. Well, wouldn't, um, some, wouldn't some of that be part of their own natural job? I'm sure many people already do that. But not everybody does. Every, some people kind of feel like, oh, and that, I think that's not really part of my job. And so I wanted to encourage everybody to try to get a little better or more knowledgeable about their job. Um, so it's not to be just like a casual little thing. They would have to put some effort in. Um, working through a course on lynda.com, doing one of the Gale courses that we have online, that would be another example of that kind of thing. Um, then there are participating in projects or working on a committee. And there are committees in-house, and then there are also committees with our library consortium that people participate in, like the catalogers meet, the uh, circulation people meet, the directors meet. So participating in things like that. Um, there, is, uh, there are a couple categories that have to do with making suggestions. Uh, one is saving the library a significant, and I said over $50 amount of money. Um, pointing out potential problems together with a potential solution. I'm trying to emphasize being positive <laughs> yes. and not just saying, this is bad and stupid. Very good. Good. And, then, you know, and then I also have, you know, contributing to the departments and the library's positive patron-focused culture. So those are some opportunities that people will have. Uh, and the, you know, there's, there's the category of other two. If the supervisor has noticed something extraordinary that somebody did that they want to remark on, they can do that there too. So that is uh, that is how we are handling the merit increases. And that's in addition to their evaluations. Right? That's 
Uh, that it's this very is a specific. piece of it, yeah. Okay. yeah. And, and how much merit does the, I mean, what kind of balance? Well, you, you guys approved a 3% raise on the salary line altogether. So it, the, the total cannot go over 3% altogether. Dad, uh, Greg put together a spreadsheet for me where I can put in what different people are getting and, and just try to keep a fix on the number. Um, and we'll see how that goes. So the people that uh, are getting their performance reviews now did not get this whole year to do some of those things. But as you point out, some of these people are already doing some of the things. You know, anybody that already volunteered to March on the 4th of July parade started up the year ahead. So these things are not automatically volunteer. Not all of them are volunteer. But Is that mandatory? Yeah, yeah I think they are volunteer jobs. I mean, um, not everything. Well, I mean, there are different Training. positions where some things would be, you know, I would expect. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think of a good example. Uh, blank right now. Well, like for participating in the CCS groups, the consortium groups, some of those people, you know, that is part of their job and they're expected to do that. Um, so that wouldn't, you know, necessarily bump them up. But if somebody else, you know, I, I for example, this this uh, bike Nile thing, when we originally put out a, a call for people to work at that table, credits. Because it's partly because <laughs> nobody knew what it was going to be. We don't really know what it's going to yeah, be because they've never done it before. Well, you know, they're doing the big bicycle race thing tomorrow. And Isn't it like early in the morning? All day. It's all, all day. day. All day. Yeah. So marketing is going to put a table up first thing in the morning, and we're going to have people at the table available to talk with people and answer questions and just kind of be out in the community promoting things. Um, yeah. So when I reminded them, though, that you know this was an opportunity, suddenly I had lots of volunteers, and from a department that doesn't normally go out in the community that much. So it's things like that. It's to encourage people to do some of the things they're already doing, but to do more of that kind of thing. You know, writing posts for the library's blog is another thing where people might need that just that little bit of an extra nudge to actually put put the you know put the pixels on paper. So who does the accounting on this as far as who well, keeps that's, track of everything? Well, this, uh, that's a great question. I told the staff that they have to help keep track of this stuff. They can't just expect their supervisor. For example, Athena in, in patron services has 37 so. people that she's having to keep track of. That's, you know, she's because she's got all these people with little part-time jobs. So nobody could expect Athena to keep track of every single thing that they did. It will be on the people, and I told them you're going to have to get better at bragging about yourself. You're going to have to, you know, keep track for yourself. And yeah, I have to this thing. And she you had to keep track of those things. Or, I mean, What's that? In, in the business world, uh, I, my supervisor not expected to do all the tracking either. But yeah. you know, we typically, you know, so uh, goals tap on down, uh, spread out across the, the board. And this person that has 37 people then he has regular meetings to say, okay, yeah, I'm meeting all my goals to this point. We meet on a, uh, a bi-weekly, you know, a bi-monthly basis, and, you know, they track the stuff. And, and at least, you know, she has some understanding of, of where we're going. So, mm -hmm. is, is, is that how this happens? Or? Well, I mean, I don't know, because, the, you know, we're like one week into it at this point. So, I, I think these are good thoughts for me to kind of keep in mind of ways you know, to be doing it, I well, think it... How, how we do it with my staff uh, Main South, I just have, I create a Google Doc, and I usually have, um, you know, different types of tasks, and then they fill it in. I just tell them, guys, fill in your stuff, so, and then we, and should they share it with me, so I can kind of right. see it, and then I can use it, you know, to put in the report at the end of the year, too, and then that would kind of help. And again, it doesn't have to be 100% on the, oh, yeah. the report, but you can definitely see where... Those lines. Yeah. Our Google Docs are awesome because they you know, share, and it helps you realize what you've done too. And you're like, Whoop. "Well, yeah, exactly. you've done a lot, or right. I haven't done so much." No, <laughs> it, it does kind of again just contribute to the more positive atmosphere. And it really, these things are all intended to tie to our strategic plan and get us where we said we wanted to be going. And right. so the, the return on investment of having people go out to do this bike thing is just to have. Uh, two, three people at this thing to be able to answer questions. Is it to, to get more library usage? It's, it's, what's the what's the value add? To the, well, to it's it? partly just making the library more visible in the community. I think um, I think any particular event might bring a different pool of people. I think the people that come to Holly Jolly are not necessarily the same people 
that are coming to uh, to this event, and maybe it'll be the same. But you know, this is we don't really know what to expect. So, yeah, because I just it, I, I wonder. I know I I know the lots are full, and, and we're spending thousands of dollars to rent additional space so the people can park here. So I, I'm just trying to, to figure out, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, the lots yeah. are full, but only 25,000 of our people have library cards yeah. in, a, in a community of 58,000. So a lot of people are using us, but not nearly all of yeah. the people are using us. And so it also just gives people a chance to ask a question that, you know, they might not have come to the library to ask, but yeah. they can ask, hey, do you have e-books? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, so, and some of the opportunities we do, um, like, Jody does the Senior Expo. You know, it's a chance to reach a targeted audience in some, some of these cases. Okay. But yeah, it's, you know, it's a chance for people to meet you. And, you know, a lot of people have a very dated idea of what a library is supposed to be. And they think we're all, you know, with our, with our buns. And we got a lot of marketing going out there. I get my, my color brochure on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Susan, I just had one question. Regarding the, um, like, Websites or training, is that something that's going to be done on their own? Is it during the day? Will they just well, then we would have to pay them for that. We can't ask staff ever to volunteer. That would be a violation. So it does have to be worked out together with their supervisor when they can be doing this kind of thing. Yeah. No, I can't. The Department of Labor would be all over it. So they're not going to go on a website and just learn something? Oh, they, yeah, that might be what they do, but the li but uh, let's say it's a children's library and the children's supervisor would have to make sure that they had time off of desk to be able to do that. Or maybe they'd be able to do it on the desk and, you know, between clients. But so they're doing this on work time, not oh, it on has to be work time. time. Yeah, I can never ask people you to know volunteer. What? Susan, is this kind of like, like for me, for example, working at the school? We have, um, what are those things called that we have to do on, online? Linda, those uh, oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. those things online that we have to do the re oh like tutorials yeah like we that. have to do tutorials they're legal we have to do I think there's like ten of them every year mm -hmm. by October sometime and we legally especially me because I'm hourly I'm not salary under contract. I have to do it during the work time. Right. That's exactly the same. Yeah. Because almost all of the staff here and is that's hourly. what this is too, right. isn't it? Because everybody yes. here is hourly. Absolutely. Okay. Just the supervisors. Yeah. Supervisors are not, but uh, everybody else is. Well, you know, it's, it's going to be during work time. Do you think that maybe instead of it being voluntary to leave the library, maybe it could be something they could do in their department to enhance it? That would well, the library. There are lots of different things, opportunities here, but we put in the strategic plan that we want more community engagement. So that's what this general category is about. I know, but not maybe not necessarily at the cost of you know having someone not in the library, having needing to replace them. I mean, it's just it's like a snowball effect of cost. I don't think well, that was the, the plan. If we want to send people out, we have to send people out. I mean, Right. I mean, we do send people out. We send the in the August in well, Zoe goes out because it's part of her job. Well, right. it's, it, it yeah. is, it's not an additional hard cost, right? No. No, there's no, no. cost. Sure. How could it not be? Because you're paying exactly. people regardless. It, it, at, at any given time, there are a million things around here that somebody could be doing, and it's a matter of right now they're going to do this instead of that, and later it's all just the timing of things and fitting things around the patrons that come in. You have your feast or famine times in the library. You just never 100% know. Yeah, so uh, it's not it actually is a staffing formula to all of this. Um, it, it does. It will end up costing us. Because well, people just can't be doing something other than their job during job time. It's their job. It is their job. Many of these to people train themselves on the job. No, to go on a website and learn something. How is that part of their job? If it, well, it has to be job related. The whole point is that it be job related. It's not for them to learn how to paint watercolors. Well, professional development usually isn't done during the day when you're being paid. No, no. Oh, no. No. Don't you, Sometimes. since you work at a school, do, don't you also have to do the things pertaining to child abuse and all of that stuff online? I do, I, I do them at home. Okay. Technically, you could do them at home because it's online. We get beat up 
verbally if we do them on I'm just saying uh, that's, at home. That's we are how supposed your to do school them. district wants to function. That's how our school district does it because they figure they're going to have less legality issues. So they say because but this is a law. And any professional development I always paid for and did on my own after work. So I, I come from a different perspective. That's well, all I, you know, I, I, I'm absolutely sure that a great many of the staff here do many things to improve themselves outside of their jobs, but I can't ask them to do that. The Department of Labor, could, all it would take is one disgruntled employee making a complaint. They come in and they do an audit, and now the library is on the hook for thousands of dollars. Oh, I understand. So maybe that's not what we should be asking them to do. Maybe we should just rethink about how it could be job-related or library-related. Or you would benefit anyway. I think we, we sort of have thought this through in terms of our strategic plan. And I think we'll talk about this more when we get to the strategic plan. But we actually want more community engagement. That's something sure that we, we do. do. So that's something that we are asking our employees to do. Um, is there more to your uh, report? You one more piece. Oh, yes. Um, I have had some comments lately about our delivery service, and it actually kind of relates to this discussion. Um, and I think there's a big misunderstanding about uh, what we deliver. Um, the purpose of our delivery service is that we go to nursing homes, to schools, to daycares, and to private citizens' homes who are homebound, who cannot get into the library. And we deliver materials to them. We are not delivering to the institution. We are delivering to the people that live in that institution. It's where they live. They can't get here. And so, but they have a library card. So um, I think I, I think maybe Mr. Martin, you said at one point in the public comments that you thought that the nursing homes say should be coming here and that we were doing their work for them. And I, you know, I understand that point of view. But we aren't delivering to private businesses. We're not, you know, going to somebody's shop and just delivering for their. No, I, I fully understood that. But I, as I uh, had both my parents in, in different nursing homes, different uh, places. Uh, where they were staying uh, while not at home. I know for a fact that they have people that are in charge of those institutions for having videos, oh, sure. having you know music, for having other things. And, and there's people that, that live there as well as people that are there for long-term care. And all I was saying is, is that uh, I consider myself uh, like the donut shop. I got the donuts. You want the donuts come get the donuts. And there has to be some personal responsibility. Uh, Tim here, I'm sure if his parents were in, he would come by and, and just love to pick up some books, videos, and so on and drop them off. Okay, but what about the little old lady who doesn't have any relatives left and is a lifelong reader and wants... And then the person from that facility should stop by. We could, I'm sure, you know, make up a you know, a box for that person. They can come by and pick it up off the shelf just like I do. You know, I want this book and it's put on the shelf. Well, I mean, that is how it's done for most people. By the great majority of people, that's so, how it's so, done. But we do deliver to, you know, the small group of people that are incapacitated but are still our residents. And then in the case of the schools, we deliver to the teachers for the use of the students who are completely at the mercy of their parents, whether they are able to get to the library or not. But they still belong to this library. They're still entitled to use our resources. And they, they are entitled, but I'm just saying is I think there's a cost with the delivery of those. Well, there there's is a the, cost. There's the cost of the van. There's the insurance for the van. There's sure. the maintenance for the van. There's the, the, the uh, pension, salary, and benefits for the person driving the van. And I just feel that uh, there's a lot of responsibility the library takes on when the responsibility is personal responsibility for people to get that type of stuff. I went on a weekly basis with both parents. But they were so lucky to have you. Yeah, yeah well, you know, and, and, and in most of the nursing homes, again, I say, there are, there are ways to get that type of material so what about like the homebound people? I, I guess I would just say then why do we have a free bus either? You know, communities don't. Oh, I see so many so people in their free bus. No, but I'm just saying it's like. Don't go just, there. I just my mother-in-law used the free bus. I oh, your mother-in-law <laughs> and what five other people? 
know that we see I'm people getting off the free bus in front of the library here no, all the time. But you know, so we people here still reminisce about the bookmobile. They still very much miss when the bookmobile got out into the neighborhoods, and that was another way of getting the collections out to people. All right, yeah. Susan, can I just just interject one point? As far as schools go and teachers, teachers already pick up this and pick up that. I'm wondering if maybe. We couldn't really give this some thought and see if there could be a way where teachers and schools picked up what they need for their kids. They pick up everything else. How, and, but you're know, asking them to take school. time after their school day to come and, and do pick it up all the time. It's 30 or 50 do. books for their students. So they they're they're do not going to do it all the time. Some they do. do. They do it no, all the some time. Some do, but some do. And well, as, far anyway. as, as far as Dennis's comment about nursing homes, there is someone on staff that may, may begin to coordinate these pickups with you. It's it's well, an idea. Right. You know, yeah. actually this is really not the time to get into yeah. the labor. We, we kind of expand on a lot of the topics. Yeah, it's yeah, a new, new uh, business kind Susan's of report. Sorry, and Susan. I'd like to sort of steer it back to that okay. uh, report if you cool. want to uh, okay. finish that. Uh, well I just wanted to make it clear that in the, you know I keep getting asked for circulation records of our deliveries and they I can't do that because those are being delivered to people. They're not being delivered to institutions. People are covered by the Library Confidentiality Act. I cannot reveal what we give to people. So that's uh, right. and, and I don't know enough about, about you know sorry. so I, I just what, the question. what about uh, communications? Um, well, I think there, in fact, was a lovely note to one of our staff people for the work that they do in this kind of regard. The flowery note here, it means a great deal to people that we go out and visit them. And then we also, um, I just want to explain the donation here to Rainbow. Rainbow therapy is that they are the people that bring in their dogs to do the Reading with Rover program with the young children. So we make a donation to them. So that's what that donation is. All right, fine. Um, okay. So, oh, what? <laughs> I just want an observation. <laughs> that I, I was very uh, pleased with the turnout for the 4th of July parade. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Good time to say it by all. And uh, on page 32, uh, we had uh, 1,138,548 items checked out. What a tremendous, uh, that is over a million items for this, uh, our community. Isn't that something? Is, is, that on, is that on recurring? I mean, I know that everybody that checks something out, unless they turn it in, it automatically gets re up for them. So I, I'm trying to understand the, the actual figure there. To, and, and it's okay if somebody can explain it, but I know if I check out five books and I hang on to them, when it comes time for renewal, they automatically be up on for me unless somebody's got a hole. So is that part of the circulation that you're talking about, or is that sure something different? Sure, yeah. So. People have been appreciating that very much. It is why our fine income has gone down. But yeah, then we have uh, the board voted to do that, and people have been very, very positive about that. Yeah, well, I know. I, I, I don't have to pay the fee. I, I think it's great, but I think it's, I, I sometimes think that including that as part of the uh, circulation mm -hmm. is. I'm going by what we have to give the state. That is the number yeah. we give the state. And, and you explained it, so yeah. I, I have to go with what, what right. you're expecting. But, but then you also see on page 36 that we have all the information about the things that we end up sending to collections because not everybody does return. Them. No, I, I fully understand it. I think it's, it's too bad so, we've got to send them to okay. collections. All right. So, wait, wait. just can I finish? Can I just ask one no, question about that no, number? No, so, what Dennis asked was, is that one million a different number if we don't include these automatics? Is that what he's saying? I don't. I, yeah, it would be a different number. It's just the flat number of the number of items that got checked out. Okay. The number and, of circulation. And then just, and I swear I'll, I'll I'm sorry. stop. I'm sorry. Uh, and that means only the items that are in our library, not people who come here and want something from Evanston. We're not including that. We're just talking about what's in our library. It's everything that was checked out at this library. It includes all of the things that our patrons ask for from other libraries to be brought to them. Oh, well, that's a completely different report then. That's, that's a lot. Well, okay. it, I mean, it goes in both directions. Oh. We borrow and we lend. That's what libraries do. So could we ever find out what's leaving here? Because then we know. Sure. We know all. As opposed to one million books that 
include all the libraries, plus it includes all the automatic upgrade, up, um, what do you call that, the renewals. Could we at some point change that report? No. Why? It's what the state wants. Well, because, well, don't we want to know what we're actually doing? Doesn't it help what we're actually doing? No, we're starting to get crap. Taking all my positive stuff. You know and what? Can I say something <laughs> positive? No, no, I think it's a great number. I'm just trying to figure out what it represents. Yes. Can I say something positive? It, I didn't see it on here, but it was an activity that was last month. The movie Moana. I believe it was Moana. The, I went there with my grandchildren. I'm telling you, it was. I was told by the library staff, well, you might not see a lot of people. It was full, wow. and I was amazed at how many senior citizens were there. It's a great place for them to come, time out, they get a snack, and they get a free movie. I think it was very nice. Great. Hey, Susan, are there any liaison reports? Any from the Prince of Library? Really wasn't uh, uh, right. what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's, he's still guessing. It's a couple it's more. Come on. All right. I'm sorry. All right. Well, page, page 33, Dodie, uh, the job counseling, is a guy who has been out of work several times. I do want to commend any efforts that are made towards counseling people and, and, and looking for jobs. Uh, I think that's wonderful. That bingo thing on page 34, we have 420 books, uh, 420 books were read, uh, 97 staff cards given out. Uh, that's just wonderful, right? Those are great things. You know, if I was writing an article in the newspaper, those are the things I'd highlight it for our, uh, our library. Page 36, middle, we got this unique uh, program, right? Uh, $1,200 cash materials for the month of June. That's just fantastic, right? Good job, all. That's just for one month. So very, very good. And as uh, Dennis pointed out, page 37, uh, Darlene negotiated uh, to reduce uh, $3,800 for the renewal notice on the press reader. So these are all fantastic things. And um, for those of you who like writing type newspaper articles, those are the kind of things I do. Okay. Good old, thank you. Sorry for cutting you off. That's right. I'm very young, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Susan, anything from the Friends of the Library, the Legislative, or real? Can okay. I just say something to the friends? Yes. Uh, when I went to ALA, and I don't know if this is a good time to talk about it, but when I went to ALA, um, I had to spend a full day session mm -hmm. for trustees, and um, part of it was relationships with friends and what their purpose was and their thoughts and stuff, what was happening okay. you know, with us and the yeah, friends. Yeah, if you would just give us a report, because no, I don't think anyone else was able to make it there right. from the board. Right. I, no I was going to go look at the exhibits for that, then I learned at the last minute they didn't, they closed on Tuesday, oh. so they <laughs> yeah. could go look at the exhibits. So anyway. Well, it was really interesting because the, like, the, I don't know if you call me like, the president of the Friends of the Library, you know, I mean, he's like the guru of knowing about what the Friends job is, like what their purpose is, what their relationship should be with the library. Um, so, and you were able to do little breakouts and ask your own little personal questions of what's happening in your library, and then they give you personal answers. So it was interesting. Um, so I had just brought up the piece, you know, of like are they allowed to specifically say, you know, what exact, I just brought up the travel books, like what exact books, you know, are you having that, you know, so that they could, um, you know, specifically want to know what they are purchasing, and they said absolutely not. They have to go and abide ex exactly by the bylaws, just how we do. So they suggested that we have someone go to the actual funds meeting, lawyer, um, some, you know, they said someone who is, would professionally know how to explain how they have to abide by the bylaws. And that is how they need to actually do their business. Mm -hmm. um, and also, when they're purchasing, I, so I kind of needed to get a little understanding myself. They said, if your budget is, okay, just say $10,000 for buying materials, um, you're only going to use maybe $200 or $300 of that overall for travel books. Let's just use this example. So. Um, so whoever is a part of that department says, you know, we really need more travel books. That's when you do go to the fronts. It's not really put in your in their budget. It's only a book. Um, if you want carpet, and we board the board members approved 
we just want this regular carpet, but you really want shag carpet for your... Remember, this is how they explain it to me. You want special shag for your children's department instead. So well, the board is willing to pay this, but they, you really want this extra. Then you go to the front and you say, hey, can you give us this extra money? Because we really want this special children's room. You know, and that's what you go to the fronts for. So it's not um, explaining every single item, you know, except maybe with a rug you might, but um, but not if it was a, a full purpose rug like this. But it's just explaining for the bigger and better things that you want for the library with no specifics needed. It just has to be kind of an overall. But they really pointed out that we really should have someone go and talk with them and explain their purpose, their responsibilities, and their relationship that they're and, and what they should be doing to help the library. And they need to make their own money. They said um, they have to make their own money. They cannot be using money that's made from the library. They should be going out and funding their own account. Mm -hmm. The person who was speaking, uh, where was he from? Um, it was from the trustee, what was it called? The Al uh, United for Libraries. United for Libraries, right. Would he be willing to go out and talk? Pardon? Would he be willing to go out and talk? I don't know. I think they, he lives in another uh, state. Do you okay. know his name? I don't know. I get to but would it be in the program, maybe? Or maybe. Could you still go yes. on, on, yeah. on, on the site and see who he was? Well, no. We just had little She would have in her information. Oh, I would have, I we see. just had little subgroups. Oh, okay. So let me, you know, you brought up a good point, travel books. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is when the library had a request for those mm -hmm. $4,500 right, with the right. travel books, mm -hmm. the, the friends should not have asked for, I think he asked for history or usage. So they shouldn't do that before no. they agree to pay for something. Nope. Just it's, write a check. If they agree to, if, if okay. they show that they hmm. that's what they want, they want to boost up their collection, but it's not really set in the budget, if they choose, Yes or no. That's their that's their position. But to ask for any other additional so absolutely not. Usage, no. Nope. Interesting. Okay. No. They said absolutely not. That's not in, it shouldn't be in their bylaws. It shouldn't be anything specific like that. As long as it's something that's going to be added to the library and benefit a group that they are they, that the librarians, um, whoever the department mm -hmm. see that there's a need that they need to boost, it's something that they just need to um, to they they need that uh, you know okay. does that make sense? Okay. Um, well I mean I just work. wanted to clarify so yeah that's well I just said you know what because I didn't okay. you know I didn't know and I just said like well this is a great opportunity for me you know let me just ask my questions and um, they said that they really have to stick by the bylaws those questions should never be asked it's and and it's hard so you know it is hard sometimes to really go by those bylaws but they really should be next to them. And again, that they have to be making and finding good fundraising ways to obtain money to uh, go and, and help the library. So it was right. it was very interesting. It was really a great little you know breakout. Well, I'm glad you were able to get there. I appreciate it. So it was one piece, and I'll do another piece that I went to another you know portion after the prize. Oh, okay. All right. Fine. Yeah. Oh, speak, speaking of uh, bylaws, so um, we of course have bylaws for our board, but I don't know that I've seen the bylaws for friends. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Is that something that we might get a copy of? Absolutely. Okay. And speaking of our bylaws, I think a uh, uh, bulk of all the policies and bylaws have been uh, presented to the new trustees. I think you've got a binder yeah. of that, is that correct? Right? And, um, yeah, Susan, we've talked about perhaps getting updated binders for the other board members yes, because yes. we've changed a number of things over the yes. past year. Yes. So yeah, uh, perhaps at the next, the next meeting we, we might do that. And um, another thing that, um, just while we're on this topic, uh, that I uh, talked to Susan about was creating a, a, a policy folder. There are some policies which just don't fit in the bylaws and they don't fit in the policy, but there are matters we've addressed in the past in which we make decisions on that say this is how we're going to operate going forward, but then those decisions or policies tend to get lost or misplaced or forgotten at times. So <coughs> Susan's going to try and create a, a folder of those too going forward. Cool. Okay. All right. Uh, turning to the secretary's report, um, I think um, I, I'm going to ask uh, 
stay in there, if you would read the um, statement, um, which is the ordinance adapting the prevailing wage. We've got two Diane's here, actually. Diane, yeah. yeah. would you uh, yes. just, um, take care of that, please? A copy of ordinance 17-04, an ordinance adopting the prevailing wage rates for laborers, workers, and mechanics employed by the Niles Public Library District, Niles Main District Library, effective July 1, 2017, was mailed to the Illinois Department of Labor and to the Secretary of State Index Division on June 22, 2017. Publication of Notice of Determination for Ordinance 17-04 was made in the Niles Herald Spectator on Thursday, June 29, 2017. Thank you very much, Dr. Um, we will now move on to uh, new business. And um, this is regarding our strategic plan. So, um, just to get this discussion on the table, do I have a motion to approve the 2017-18 strategic plan work plan? Uh, motion. Okay, Maddie, do you have a second? Second. Okay, fine, great. Um, let me just uh, say that if, the, if any of uh, the board members have any comments regarding the strategic plan, I encourage you to uh, make those comments during the discussion period. Um, I would uh, suggest that it's, don't wait until you're voting to make any uh, suggestions or comments you have about uh, the plan or um, as to why you're going to vote for it or not vote for it. Uh, please make those during the discussion period so that everyone at the table can have the benefit of your comments and, and understand your comments before they make their vote. Uh, your comments might influence their vote. So uh, please make all your comments during the discussion period. And then when we get to the point of the meeting where we're voting on this item and other items, uh, please just vote yes, no, or abstain. So, all right, um, before we actually get into the discussion by the board members, uh, I'd like Susan to start off by uh, telling us what uh, what we have here, what has been developed, and what we're looking at tonight. All right. Uh, I just want to refresh your memory that in June you passed this document. This is our strategic plan. So the next phase of this was to take this strategic plan and turn it into the steps that we're going to try to tackle over the next year to year and a half. So I worked with uh, the committee that has been working on the strategic plan all along to develop the work plan, and that's this document in your board packet. I'm going to assume that all of you, being adult people, have read your strategic plan and you know what we're, what we're talking about here, so I don't want to belabor anything here. It's just, um, I'm very happy to answer any questions that you have, but the general categories that we picked to go first, uh, we, we heard from, she has a page. Oh, God. Yeah. Right. And, and Susan, don't hesitate to do a little more background. No, no, no. We have no, a couple of newer uh, trustees yes. here. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is something we started on last year, or, or earlier. Yeah, so um, the things that year. we heard, yeah, I, I wanted to sort of prioritize some of the things we heard the loudest from our focus group <coughs> and from the people that were on our surveys. Um, and so one of the things that we heard loud and clear is that people have a really hard time finding their way around this library. With its four different floors, uh, it's really easy to get kind of tangled up and turned around and people don't feel like they understand where they're supposed to be going. So the first part of the plan is dealing with some, some of the things that we think would uh, help with that. Um, we, it ha it's been pointed out to us that we don't have signage on each one of our rooms. For example, the boardroom is not labeled boardroom. So there's some simple things that we can do initially here. Um, and then we have some things that we'll be experimenting with. The board already voted to uh, purchase Communico, and so that's going to help with some of this uh, by being able to send information to electronic screens around the library. And screens are so cheap these days that I think that that will be a practical way of uh, changing information quickly without having to keep reprinting things. Um, I kept the plan somewhat limited because in this coming year we have two enormous projects. The first one is the migration from our current integrated library system with Circe Dynex to the Polaris system. And that is a consortial move. We have no choice about it. We are not, you know, we can't say 
we know we're going to stick with Cersei Dye next week. We have to do this. It is going to take a great deal of staff time in the coming year. So I did not want to overcommit on other things because realistically, getting the staff trained so that they, you know, we get our data migrated properly and that, so that then you can, you know, when people look up their books or their DVDs or whatever it is, they get the information they're looking for and that then the, um, Staff is able to work with patrons, and the patrons are able to use the new catalog. Those are all going to be very important things. Is there a uh, The go live date is, predicted is supposed to be third week of April, 2018. We just actually had a big webinar today where a lot of it was being the timeline was being fleshed out for a lot of the staff. I had about 25 people there today. So, Susan, if I can just ask real quick, yep. just in terms of timelines, you have a column here that says quarter one through six. Yes. So we're in the first quarter yeah. now, in the first our quarter fiscal now. year. Yep. So this will take us through the six months of this year and the 12 months of That's 2018. That's exactly right. Now. Okay. Yes. So I, you'll see very, very little in this plan for quarter three and quarter four, and that's because that's when it'll really be heating up for getting people trained and making the transition over to the new software. So that's why it's kind of heavy on quarters one and two, and then heavier on quarters five and six, and not very much in three and four, because that's what we will be doing. Um, I, so enhancing onboarding experience in library users, I am postponing working in diligently on that until after we're in the migration and we know how our new software works. Um, so but that's... Just wait a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so the goal was part of our strategic plan and each investment was part of our strategic plan. That's correct. Right. All of those so things were So the projects projects. are the items that you have detailed now. Thank you. That's right. exactly right. Correct. Right. Yes. So you, you remember that this plan has four general categories and so each page mm -hmm. of this is one of the categories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we have been working on a who answers what where directory so that staff will kind of better understand who is supposed to be doing what in each department. Um, uh, we do have a very, very, very old staff intranet. It's like circa, I don't know, 2000 or something. It's really old. So we are going to use our new Communico product to build a new staff intranet that will help people get information more quickly. Uh, we want to, as part of our improving our customer service and having people get the same information at each desk, and, and as just as a good practice in general, we already have many staff trained to work at multiple desks, but we will do even more of that, trying to get people with a completely new perspective at a desk to kind of observe, well, we don't do it that way in my department, and kind of pick up where there are things being done differently. Um, the second point is the expanded community engagement. And so the first part of that is um, what I said before is that, you know, the information gathering piece of the strategic plan was very clearly to me the beginning. It was like starting to talk to people, but it was not uh, getting anything like as in-depth as we need to do. So several of the tasks here are related to uh, learning more, you know, finding out if we're right in our, we always presume that people in the northwest part of the district have a harder time getting to the library and aren't using the tools as much. So this is to get at more of that information. Uh, the original goal was to develop a task force to gather information and it was clear to me in working through this that a lot of the tools we'll be using initially are internal tools. So a lot of the first quarter things are going to be an internal, uh, my staff task force and then by the sixth quarter we'll have a better idea of what we would need for a community task force. I didn't want to form a community task force before I was very clear on what the goals of that task force would be because I do not want to waste people's time. I had a question. Are we supposed to be interjecting comments here? Are we supposed to be? Um, why don't we wait till the end and okay. then we'll all take turns asking okay. questions if that's okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, the point of committing more resources and attention to community engagement. Um, I just put in a line for planning the 2018-19 budget with resources committed to that. that. So that would be, we'll be looking at that at that time. It's not, it doesn't have a specific amount of money there because we don't know yet. Um, we already have been working at establishing community partnerships. We would be continuing to do that and that will help us learn much more about our community. Um, working with people out in the schools and in the park districts and things like that. Um, Continue to the third goal, focus staff development. Uh, I don't have a great deal in this one because a lot of the migration work we'll be doing and then launching the passport service also has a lot of training in it. 
So this one is a little undeveloped compared to some of the others because I feel like staff are already going to be. Um, but I did um, talk with Carolyn the other day and we're going to be working together a little bit on developing some community resources to be working with on some of the, um, their information about what they understand about people and how to work with people with different groups. So I think that would be great. Then continuing on to strategic focus four, enhanced community awareness and alignment. This was the other big thing we heard back from the community were things about marketing. Uh, and the main things that we heard about that are you have all these great things going on, you have all these great programs, you have all these great collections, but I don't know about them. They, they feel like um, they, they don't ever know what's going on because there's just so much that we have to communicate and so many different languages to communicate in and so many different ways, preferred ways of getting information. So this is the beginnings of trying to look at that. But I know that uh, one of our new trustees has... Um, been very interested in our chapter one and whether that's a good way of delivering information and, and if the way that we're doing that is a good way and the most cost effective way. Our newsletter. Quarterly. The newsletter. Yeah, the chapter one is the quarterly newsletter. So, um, so I thought we would focus on that first since I know that that's something that you have talked about before. And it's also something that, you know, we spend a lot of time on. I, and I bet money. you do. So, uh, so we want to look and, and make sure that that is the best way to be delivering that information. Uh, this also does include the signage project, and um, I want to say forthrightly that um, I am the one who began saying you need some exterior signage here because uh, you had mentioned the two signs on the building, but one of those signs does not exist. There is one sign for this entire building. It's at the corner of Oakton and Waukegan. There is literally not a single sign on the library building itself. And so people pull into the back driveway if they manage to find their way to Oakton Court. And there's nothing to tell them that they're in the right place. So Greg will be doing a presentation later that he will be going through that in detail. But I just want to be clear that I am the one that did it. It is not about my ego. It's about making sure that we're spending all this money to run this library. And every business, if you drive by it, they've got their monument sign. They've got their name on the building. You go to the village, they've got their monument sign, they've got their name on the building. You need to know who we are. And so I actually had somebody uh, say to me that they came in the back driveway and they weren't even sure that they were in the right place. You can't assume that everybody knows who we are. So that was my motive for it. It is certainly not, I certainly don't have somebody in the signage building business that's going to make a profit. My intention is to do good. And so, you know, that you, you guys are going to make your own decision on it, but I just want to be clear that it's not that the board is trying to look important. This was my idea, and I stand by it. So. All right, well, we'll talk more about the yes, signage later, later uh, as part of the actual discussion on the signage and the uh, specifics. But let's, let's look at the strategic plan, work plan here. And I think you've gone through it now. You've talked about the four different uh, goals that we have here and the projects that, that you've laid out for the staff to complete, the timeline and so forth. So uh, unless you wanted to add something to it, uh, uh, open it up for discussion now. And if, if you would just raise your hand so we could sort of not all shout out at the same time, I'll uh, uh, address anyone, I'll call on whoever wants to address a question to Do you have a question, Dennis? Thank you, Indicator. Oh, I, I had a lot of questions, so I'll, I'll, I'll let the other folks have an opportunity. I just have a real quick question. Yeah, Could you review the quarter? What, is, what are the quarters? The quarters, the quarter one is um, July through September, July through October one. So it's basically the second half of summer, fall, uh, winter, post Christmas, and then spring, which is when we'll be migrating. Um, and then the first half of summer, second half of summer again. And I would anticipate that we would be renewing this probably starting at about the one year point to update the plan. And I would be updating the board continuously about how it's going. Yes, great. I think I asked you if you would come to us at least every quarter yeah, to absolutely. give us an update on how the library is progressing towards meeting all of these yes. uh, goals. Yeah. So, uh, anyone else? Well, Hello, Dennis. Might as well go ahead. Yeah, we'll go with me. So, uh, so I've been having some difficulty getting down to Disney as of late. Uh, but I don't think what? Disney is going to come 
build anything near Chicago. So in, 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 in our state here, in a village of Niles, we've got the village of Niles as a library. And if, if there's people on the northwest side that can't find their way to get to the village of Niles, you know, I say, oh, so sad, too bad. I say, let's take a look at any one of the other libraries that's out there. And, and, and maybe they can go to one of the other, other libraries that are, that's a little closer to them. And, and, and pick up that space instead of coming to Niles. I know people from Chicago that are coming here, so they're really far away, and yet they're coming to Niles. So I, 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 I just don't understand the whole thought and process of needing to expand our services to the northwest side. You know, sometimes people build things in certain places, and, and we have to just, you know, pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and you know, get there if we need to. Like I said, tough to get down to Disney, but a lot of people do it because they want to. And, you know, we don't, Disney's not, not going to make it their responsibility to, to make me happy. Nobody's paying taxes to Disney. Those people are paying taxes to us. Well, I would like to see numbers. I'd like to make my well, business exactly decisions what based is. off of numbers. Yeah. So if you could show me numbers of people, I already saw, I already heard that of the, the number of card holders per the people in Niles is, is half of the people in Niles. So I'd like to see some numbers indicating that these people in the northwest side are being underserved and can't get there. Um, you know, can I say something about that? Yeah, you know, I was never really crazy about this particular investment myself. We they went in order just to explain this process, we went through this whole thing. It was a whole big process in order to create the strategic plan. And these this column, the investment column, that is uh, what the board voted on for the strategic plan. So if there's any particular item in there, I think we would have to go through Proposal, we would have to right. discuss it, we would have to yeah, do a right. so we, you know, I agree. That's right. So we had, you know, we went through this whole strategic plan process, which which went months back, and, and we came up with this plan, and um, one of it was to explore options for expanded service in the northwest part of the district. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so, yeah, so we had this large group of people involved in doing this. It wasn't just board members, it was a lot of people that, that came in. I, I understand that he had actual numbers of people okay. that attended those sessions, and it's not a large group of people. Well, it's, you know, right. we, had, we invited people, and, you know. People, yes, people were invited, and I know, invited. and I understand that it's hard right. to get people so, in. So, <laughs> I fully um, understand. In any event, this was the strategic plan yes. that was, yeah. was arrived at. Yeah. So this was one of the goals that was arrived at. What, what, what Susan's charged with doing is, is how are we going to accomplish those goals? What, what exactly, are, what projects are we going to have? And Susan can't really change those goals. I mean, we've given the, the community, no, no, the community I, has arrived at this yeah. plan and said, uh, you, library director, have to figure out how we're going to do this. And you have to come up with a plan. And so she's come up with a plan. And, and I, think, I think it's good. I'm not saying anything against her plan. You asked for comments. I'm giving my comments up front. Okay. Because I, I, that's the way I feel about it. I understand she, she has that as a goal. She needs to pursue it. Mm -hmm. And I think she should pursue it, but we need, need to do it based on facts. Well, I think, I think what we're looking for in terms of, of comments are, uh, do you have any comments on the way that she's carrying out the goals that have already been set? Uh, not, not at all. I, that's, that's not what my, my concern is. Yeah, it's, I, it's, it's the question about expansion to the Northwest that raises some particular concerns. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think Teddy had her hand oh, up okay, okay. My, my thing with expanding to the Northwest, I'm not saying, hey, we're going to blow it, spend all the money there. That's definitely not my goal at all. My goal is to let her do her research and see if there's other ways we can promote the library or do something. No, I think it's great. I, you know, that those were her goals, and we don't vote on doing anything until she gives us something that she feels we should do, and then we we don't like it, then we say, eh. Yeah. Try oh, I wasn't expecting a vote tonight. <laughs> Somebody wanted my comments. No, I, I feel very strong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. 
Okay. Yes, and I'm sorry. And I just, I guess this is kind of what we're trying to talk about. Um, okay. I also went to another um, session at ALA, and it was a session on expanding to another portion of a community. And um, it was really interesting because I think you're just automatically, I, I don't want to put words yeah, in your no, mouth, okay. think that it's going to be a brick and mortar. Okay. Okay? It doesn't have to be a brick and mortar. Okay. And that was what was really cool about this um, session that I went to. They were talking about it could be, um, they had, you know how like an ice cream truck, like a little bicycle thing? They have these bicycles that you can actually have, and you can have all of your marketing, you can have books, you can have, and you can put that in place that you wouldn't bike it. You can, but you yeah. place it yeah. in place, and maybe there was a bike thing going on there. Maybe there was a, um, a street fair going on that day. Or, you know, and you could place things, mm -hmm. and you could do it, and you can use that all over. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to just be in right, but it's a way to market and mm -hmm. utilize space there. Um, they had things also about uh, these storage units. People are popping up these storage units, and very, very easy, $1,200, and they make it into a, a you know, a, um, a second place. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be anything, I mean, I told it was like $20,000 altogether. You know, of course you need another staff member. But it didn't have to be, a, but it didn't have to be, yes. you know, like a, a big amount. Yeah, so no, there's I, options. Yeah, I, and I understand. And again, so, we're just doing the yeah, research. Yeah, it's, it's research, hurts, hurts right, a goal. it's just options. I, I'm glad you brought that up as another alternative because there's it helps kind of so clarify. so many different ways to look at this, and, and other people are looking at it too, not just us and Niles, I mean, all around the country. I mean, ALA, I mean, all around people are, and they gave different examples of, I think there was one in Boise, excuse me, um, they rented a little part portion of a house, and then they, you know, used, you know, a few rooms of it, and had like an alternate library in there. It's, you know, when I dri was driving to Evanston, um, I noticed they have another little library, you know, that they're a large one. I don't know how much that is now. That's the brick and mortar, but you know that would be good to find out. You know how much is there? But do we even need it exactly? Do we need it? That's what we're looking for. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it's just there's tons of options, but it doesn't necessarily have to mean the brick. And mortar. No, I, I just I just wanted you know I, I'm sorry you know Susan <laughs> okay. I, I I I know you've been here for a long time and you know the library much better than I do. I'm just saying from my perspective from a taxpayer's perspective, from a business perspective, that I've been out there, I've been working in the corporate world for 30 years, and I, I know things are done differently. So it's going to take me a little while to understand the library's perspective. I just want to make sure that we're going about it in, in, a, in a responsible way, and, uh, and just because another area is doing it doesn't mean that we have to do it. I mean, uh, Park Bridge runs a great, you know, outdoor concert. I go there all the time. Uh, but, you know, Niles doesn't have to do that. I know we got something, but, you know, just because they're doing it, I'll drive over there, and I don't have to spend any taxpayer money. So, so it's not right. taxpayer yeah. money. Well, let's be second point. So, um, uh, my, my, my and, 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 and you got to, not kind of, so, my other uh, issue was with, with, was with the signage. I don't know if we're that up. Why don't we discuss that? And the next item is devoted exclusively to the signage. So, oh, yeah. if you want to yeah. discuss yeah, it, because I have a lot to discuss with it. Okay. okay. All right. So, how about? Uh, are there any other comments or questions regarding the strategic plan work plan? Yeah, just. We'll go ahead. No, I, I I'd like to have the other people go sure. first because I'm not. No, I'm just uh, commending that uh, that so little was actually. Just my only other comment is that I agree. A lot of work goes into the statuses, trying to break it down, trying to break up the timing. I agree, it's a lot of time. Uh, again, the whole marketing uh, aspect. I, I'm amazed that you know. Uh, I remember when I was a little kid. I, I, you know, I had to go to the library. There wasn't. I, I didn't have marketing. I don't remember marketing for the library being such a, a huge. Now I'm, I'm an old man. So I, I get it that things change over time, but 
you know, we've got some, we we got a giant sized sign out in the corner that blasts what we're doing here all the time. We've got four newsletters that go out. We've got newsletters throughout the library here. You know, we've got a big giant sized van now that goes out. I'm just trying to figure out why do we have to have more stuff towards uh, the marketing aspect of this this uh, this library. Hopefully, the schools all understand and tell their students that you know the, the, the Niles Library has tremendous resources here. I, I I can't tell you the resources here, the Gale courses. We have phenomenal resources, but this shouldn't be a, a big thing for the schools to communicate out. I mean, you know, you need to do a report, you need to do some research. The Niles Library should boom. It should be communicated by the schools. It shouldn't be. That's such a hard task, you know. And, and again, not knowing the library, not knowing all the communities, uh, you know. Again, just communicating what's in my head right now, and not trying to be a jerk about it. <laughs> no, it's not. We're not just. It's not just the schools either. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, you know, that's just this portion. Mm -hmm. You know, we have all. You know, all the way through, hundred years old. You know, pre. All the, you know, so, no, I, yeah. So I mean, the schools can programs. go flourish, and yes, we do advertise and tell, but that's this much. Yeah. You know, so. Okay. Any other questions or comments about the work plan? I, I have a couple of questions, um, probably about a few things I don't understand. It's in the same um, section. Which it's, section is that? Um, page. Library page. Page. Um, I, I used hole punch, and I, it's the same page you were on for, um, for Dennis, and yeah, I have no page number. Wait, is, it is, a, is it expanded community engagement, focus staff development? Provide library services to all residents. Same page as Dennis. Yeah, what's the goal on top? To provide library services to all residents. Oh, page okay. 2 of it. Expanded community engagement. Oh, page 52? Oh. I just, I'm just trying to understand, like you said, so we're going to review. Yeah, I'm still, I'm not sure where you're at. Which page are you on? 52. They said 52? We're at 52. Right, that's where I was on the same page as Dennis, sorry. I, I, I so, so, part of 52. investment or project, where, where are you at? Okay, I'm looking at one, two, three, the third line down, review results of okay. CMAP survey. What is right. CMAP? Oh, oh, yes, that's yeah. our... Right. Cook County has been working with the uh, Main Township and Northfield Township on uh, trying to find out what the people that live in those areas need because they're all served by Cook County. They are, you know, unincorporated, mm -hmm. and so they they interviewed me. They've interviewed a lot of other people. They're still working on the results of that, though. I got a little bit of preliminary information, and one of the things that they told me is that they're hearing very loudly that the people up there want more library service. So that was part of what drove you know, thinking about this a little bit mm -hmm. more because, you know, they're feeling like they don't have a library up there. So um, the purpose of CMAP is to survey their needs. Will you be able to derive any information yeah, from that's what, that? That's what, it, that's what this is, is to, when it's finally produced, they've been working on it a long time, or Tom probably knows better than me, but yeah, what I meant, like, addresses and who lives where and who is part of your no, I don't think they'd give us that, but okay. I mean, we have addresses of every So you can our right, district. Right. So CMAP won't provide that. And then you have heat mapping. What is heat mapping? Um, it would be um, looking to see where we have clusters of people and what ages they are and things like that. It's to, what we, it's all of these things are. It's a tool. Yeah. It's um, just, you know, like if, if you look at the, your library cards, you can see where, mm -hmm. you know, you have concentrations of people with sure, library sure. cards and some, and where they don't have. Okay, well then the reason I'm asking is because then of course I drop down to create a district inventory of people, housing, stock, and resources. And you need to hire a consultant. Yes. So is that somebody from another state? or? You know, yeah, let, let me just explain who the consultant would be. Um, I have that just because there's a person that used to work here on staff. I don't know if you remember. Um, his name was Joel. And his name is still is Joel, and, um, and he is a brilliant young man. And uh, a few years ago, after the census came out, Joel came and gave a presentation to the board that had uh, really looked carefully at all the census data. And the thing for us in, as this district library is that finding census data about Niles, easiest thing in the world. Finding census data about Northfield, uh, about the main township and Northfield township, it's because it's literally block to block. And Joel actually had a total grip on that information. 
So I thought, okay. I want to be able to ask him questions to if this comes up. So I wanted to put a placeholder in here because I don't want to expect he doesn't work here anymore. And he uh, is the kind of person that puts, you know, he gets really immersed in projects and stuff. So I thought $1,000, it's kind of just a placeholder, but I thought if I, if there were turned out to be somewhere where he could be really helpful, I wanted to be able to ask him that. I see. Because okay. he really he under, has a grip on the district like absolutely nobody else. Okay, all right, that makes sense. All right, um, that was all I had. All right, any other questions or comments from anyone else? Um, oh, wait, kill me, I do have one more. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, I'll kill you. La um, the last um, uh, section, Explore Community Partnerships. Participate in village, school, park district, chamber groups, developing relationships with people and organizations. Um, is this where um, you were talking about having library staff participate in their classes, or is that what your point was? Okay. Oh, no, no. That was more, um, this okay. is more just, we already do, like, for example, I am on the Arts and Culture Council representing oh, the library. Okay. Uh, Judy is on the... I see. She's on the chamber okay. and she's on the, uh, another village. Okay. So it's things like that. You know, we work closely with all of our organizations. And, uh, you know, that was one thing that the leaders, we had a focus group with the community leaders, and that was one thing they said loud and clear is the library where we need to be working with the community. And that's great, but you know what? I would like to see them reciprocate. Oh, it, know, do, it does go back. I mean, you, we, we go here, we go there. You do, like, at the last event, I forgot where we were. And you had the green screen and whatever. I mean, that was awesome. Yeah, the night of roses. Oh, the night okay. of roses. But you know, I'd like to see them come here and do something for us without a cost associated to it. Because that's how I view partnerships. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, these business memberships then, you know, some of these people come and make presentations for us for, you know, oh, like, whatever. like a, whatever. a presentation on wills and trusts, mm -hmm. things like that, you know. The different members of the chamber come and do things like that. Okay, well, that's my last question. Thank you. Okay, all right, so what we have before us is the plan, and a uh, motion is on the floor to approve it. And I, I just remind, want to remind everyone this plan will last for the next 18 months. We will be reviewing it every three months at least. Um, Susan might bring uh, to our attention some component if something comes up in the meantime, but every three months at least we'll be going over it and reviewing what we've accomplished, where we're going. And it's not written in stone. I think if there's something that we feel we need to amend, we could do that as we go uh, go along. But this, I think, is the uh, the plan that we hope to follow. For the it's it's a basic guideline. Yeah. Right. Okay. So um, since we do have the motion, I'm not going to call for a vote. Ann, would you uh, do a roll call? Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Dennis. Yes. 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 All right, thank you. And um, Susan, would you mind when we, uh, every quarter when we go over it, would you include right. us in our that's packet that's again in case yes. we forget to bring our copies of it? All right, fine. Okay, we now are going to go uh, to unfinished business, to a uh, matter that we've addressed in the past, uh, and which we're returning to again. Uh, as you may recall, we had a, a presentation uh, last month regarding the exterior sign package. And, at the end of that presentation, I think a number of us had some questions, and we ended up tabling the matter. So it has been on the table, and we're returning to it now. Um, so to resume our discussion, we can have a motion to approve the recommended purchase of the exterior sign package from ASI for a sum not to exceed $123,113.52. Funds from the Special Reserve Fund will be used for this purchase. And the Board of Trustees reserves the right to purchase all or part of the exterior sign package at its discretion. So moved. Second. Okay, it's on the table now, so we can resume our discussion. But um, before we begin a discussion, I want to ask do we have any further information or clarification regarding this package? Uh, um, uh, yes. Um, so there were some questions about the maintenance of the uh, video screens. Uh, the video screens are uh, LED screens, which uh, have, uh, I believe, a 10-year warranty. Um, when, and that's not to say that they're only going to last for 10 years, but uh, they could have up to a 20-year life, but after uh, 10 years, you're on your own. 
Uh, of course, uh, maintenance, making sure the pans are working and things of that nature to make sure that we're doing everything to uh, prolong the life of the screens would, uh, would have to occur periodically. Um, so that was, uh, that was the LED screens. Uh, regarding the banners, uh, banners, uh, once the initial hardware is in place, the banners uh, cost $175 uh, per copy. To, uh, to replace. So, you know, if, uh, if there are uh, 18 banners in the parking lot and we decided to replace all of them at the same time, it would be 18 times uh, $175. Um, of course, the plan would be to do it monthly, but to do it uh, much less uh, frequently. Um, there was also a question about time frame. And um, I, I will tell you that you know, that um, once everything is approved, most things can be done uh, within a, uh, I'd say within a uh, uh, eight to 10 week uh, period. Uh, the one thing that will be a little bit problematic is the corner sign. Uh, the corner sign does have to go through a variance process with the, uh, uh, with the village. Um, my understanding from uh, product architects is that that's a, a two-meeting process. So you appear at the first, uh, I guess it's a zoning meeting, and uh, you make a presentation. They consider uh, they consider what your request is and don't report back until the following meeting. So that could add anywhere from 30 to 60 days, depending on the timing of, of uh, the meetings and when, uh, uh, when the approval from the board comes. In order to uh, in order to make that happen, and I think that was uh, that was the uh, all the questions that were that were addressed. So the corner sign we get a variance even though we still do have it there. Yes. What I'm just wondering why that is. Okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. But it's, yeah, but but it's out of but it's out of compliance. I mean, <coughs> it's we're grandfathered in, is yeah. my understanding, but we're out of compliance with the current regulation. So if we're going to make major modifications to it. They have to go through a variance process. Mm. Why are we? Yeah, I just don't really think it was major. But, well, it now it doesn't make it. It's changed the rules. That's probably too high or too high. Or, or, and you know. don't know what exactly. Well, I don't. I mean, I you know that's not my field expertise. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that the corner sign should be banner things? So, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you a good accounting answer, which is, it all depends. <laughs> so, okay. if, uh, if, for example, um, uh, we, uh, the library of banners that advertise a certain event, mm -hmm. or advertise yeah. uh, the opening of a new space, mm -hmm. um, before, before the banners fell apart, they, you know, the information would become stale. Mm -hmm. you know, so that would argue for a shorter lifespan for things like that. Mm -hmm. If it's a generic banner, like what was shown in the uh, uh, presentation last month, mm -hmm. uh, which just maybe you know, had an uh, NNPL mm -hmm. you know, as, as an example, uh, those would have a longer life because that's the identity of, of the library and uh, you know, they, they, I couldn't tell you how long they would last. I don't know the answer to that. But if you look, you know, if you look around town, you know, uh, Niles and other communities put up banners on the, on the main thoroughfares, and uh, very often you see them for an extended period of time, you know, uh, six months, nine months, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, you know, I think, you know, I think by the time they come down, there's still a useful life left in them, but you know, they they uh, they felt that there was a time for a change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I had one question about the LED sign. I um, did ask, um, I can't think of his name, Klug, um, or Krug. Um, right now, Sasha mentioned that it cost us X number of dollars to replace whatever lights go off. Yeah. So I asked him, with the new sign, will we be doing the same thing? No. So they'll, those just, lights... I covered that. Uh, I so didn't understand. They never go out? No, it's, in, it's a light emitting diode. Uh, they generally don't fail, 
you know, it's the kind of thing where you... Seriously. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. guaranteed for, by them for 10 years? So 10 years work? means there's that a, won't... Occur. There's a 10-year warranty. Um, you know, so, you know, something happens, you know, they you know, generally uh, uh, fix it. I'm sure there's limitations on the warranty. Um, but uh, generally, uh, they've seen them last 15 to, to 20 years, no problem. Okay, so there's no need yeah, to... You know, think about it, you walk into uh, Costco or Best Buy and you look at an LED TV and it says it could stay lit $50,000. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's about a TV. Yeah, no, yeah. that's a good point. You're right. Okay, I just yeah. wanted to make sure that I didn't miss that. Okay, that's fine. All right, thank All right. you. So, uh, Greg, you sent us the PowerPoint that, that was done, right? That Alex did, yes. That Alex did. Yeah. Um, all right, so we... we Hope people have that or have a chance to look at it too. So um, we can uh, approve the entire package, parts of the package, whatever. So I, I want to know if uh, anyone has any comments about what uh, parts of the package they're um, interested in pursuing at this time. Um, Karen, if you don't mind, I, I did ask Greg to put together a presentation to kind of review the choices and that. clarify them a little that. bit. Okay, because sure, the, you were telling me you had that yeah. done. So yeah, anyway. looking at it last month, it seemed like a little bit jumbly, and that was, I thought we really needed to clarify. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, great, because uh, yeah, I think we want to sort of make sure we're all talking about the same thing. You know, when we say ground sign, we know yeah. what we're all talking about. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about uh, exterior signage. I thought I'd start with a problem statement um, because it seems like, like a, a lot of money and you're not sure, I think a lot of people aren't sure exactly what the drivers are uh, behind it. But uh, the first uh, part of the problem statement is that the library has limited access, particularly uh, from traffic from the north and the west. Uh, from the north, the only chance to access the building is open court. Um, and uh, current signage at the, at the corner of Waukegan and uh, Open Street uh, is too late for uh, a driver to access that parking and they have to work their way around. From the west, the only chance uh, to access the building is Waukegan Road and then get on to Oakland Court. And, um, you know, if you look at the uh, corner signage, uh, it lacks the prominence to warn the patrons to turn north on Waukegan. From the south and the east, you know, there are more chances and the sign is appropriately placed because you see the sign, for example, coming from the south, and then you have an opportunity to turn an open court, and then from the east there are actually three chances to access the library building. So I put together, um, you know, some, uh, uh, some slides demonstrating that. This is, uh, this is what people are supposed to do if they're coming from the north, uh, they're coming uh, from the north, going south, supposed to make a left-hand turn onto uh, Oakton Court, and then there's uh, two entrances on Oakton Court as uh, shown by the red arrows. What they end up doing a lot of the time is they miss the turn uh, on uh, Oakton Court, and then they have to turn on Oakton Street, where they're actually prevented from getting into the uh, parking lot by the uh, medians and the traffic control uh, from the village. So, um, if they aren't real uh, certain of the, uh, of the neighborhood and the way the streets run and, and so forth, uh, it could be an issue. Uh, if they're more familiar uh, they, and they've blown that turn before, um, it'd be less of an issue. But nevertheless, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge. Uh, from the west, um, you can see that patrons would uh, make a left-hand turn from uh, Oakton Street on to uh, northbound Waukegan, and then make a right-hand turn on to uh, Oakton Court. And again, access the, uh, the two uh, red arrows uh, as entrances to the parking. Uh, generally what happens, if they miss it, they go straight through, and then they're in the same jeopardy as, as the people who missed the turn coming from, uh, coming from the north. They have to navigate their way around uh, figure out, you know, they might not be so uh, 
obvious that New England uh, leads to open and uh, open court, and they can get back on to the, you know, essentially to the back door. Another problem is uh, the low visibility. Visibility signage isn't attracting uh, patron attention. No signs on the library building identifying it as uh, as their destination. So, uh, as Susan said uh, earlier tonight, uh, a patron uh, was questioning whether or not they were even in the right spot, even though they were in the parking lot. There is no no, no identity of the library um, on any part of the structure. Um, uh, there are no signs instructing patrons where to turn to access parking to, you know, to stop getting into jeopardy and missing the turns that I showed you a moment ago. Um, the corner monument sign doesn't seem to stand out against the uh, busy street scene, and we'll see that in a minute. Uh, and then um, there are no signs allowed on the approaches announcing the library up ahead. So very often the state of Illinois will allow businesses to put, or government, uh, uh, services or institutions to put those brown color signs that says village hall ahead or library ahead or right. or you know what you know uh, this way to the stadium or or whatever uh, the case happens to be. Um, uh, several months ago, I called the uh, state of Illinois uh, Department of Transportation, I believe, and Oakton and Waukegan are both state routes. And since we have frontage on the state routes, they will not put or allow to be put along the route any of those types of signs. That's going to be my suggestion. Yeah, well, they are going to find one. Yeah, yeah. If you know somebody at the state, yeah. So here are some outside shots. Um, you know, just kind of showing, you know, where the um, where the sign is and. And uh, the front part of the library, uh, what you would see as you're traveling along. This is this one here is coming from the north, and uh, the sign is like right back here. So you know we have a little bit of an issue where there's a visibility issue. Uh, this is Oakton Court where they're supposed to turn, so you would definitely need something uh, here as the plant shows in order to signal a turn coming up. Uh, this is uh, going um, west on uh, Oakton. Uh, the library sign is about right here. Uh, this is, you know, this is the back side of the library. The first entrance is right where the stoplight is, and um, you can see there's no identity there that or anything that signals that you know this is actually uh, actually the library. And uh, this is um, from across the street. Uh, where there is a clear sign, uh, you know, a clear shot of the sign, you can see it right here, but it kind of, you know, kind of melds into the background here of the, uh, of the village hall, uh, and then you can see the village sign uh, right here. Uh, if it wasn't for the white uh, decal that we've put over the, uh, the monument sign, you really wouldn't be able to see this because of, uh, because of the gray. And then here are the, you know, here's the video screen, uh, which, you know, we're, we're replacing uh, piecemeal uh, as, uh, as units in their fail, um, given, the age of the, uh, given the age of the sign. Other problems that we're trying to uh, address, um, district residents from the north and western reaches of the district have difficulty finding their way to the library. Uh, sorry, Dennis. Um, some take free bus if it's accessible to them. Um, Others who may drive will find it difficult, that, as we've been talking about, uh, to get into the parking lot. And uh, the library doesn't have a strong identity in the community among uh, resident non-users. Um, uh, this is a quote from a clerk at, uh, at Maine Township, which is definitely in our... Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah. What? Uh, Maine Township person didn't know where our library was? Yeah, didn't know I, that they had a library. I hope you had a township. What township? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not so, yeah. that is. Yeah. Really? What's my understanding. They have a very good. So the timeline for the uh, project uh, uh, so far um, began in uh, 2015 in September. It began in the Buildings and Grounds Committee that was chaired by Barbara Nakanishi. Um, Barbara was also involved peripherally with the uh, Village Signage Project. 
Uh, in December 2015, uh, the exterior signage investigation was formalized as one of the library director's goals. In uh, March 2016, we started discussions with Dan uh, Port at Product Architects. Uh, Dan, if you remember, and Product, for that matter, were the, uh, was the organization that helped us with the uh, uh, renovation of uh, 2013. Uh, February 2017, uh, the board approved the name change um, from Niles Public Library District to Niles Main District Library. And March 2017 is uh, the first look at estimated costs prior to going out for bids, which was authorized in 2017. So, you know, there's, there's a good question um, out there uh, that some have asked and, and articulated and some haven't, but they're thinking about. And the question is, where does the money come from? Uh, money for this project will come out of the Special, special Reserve Fund, which pays for building projects. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Special Reserve Fund can only pay for IT equipment and uh, significant building and maintenance. Who puts that money in there? Maintenance, other uh, things. Uh, the current view is a million and a half in the Special Reserve. Uh, the way that the money gets in there is that the board decides from time to time to put money in there from the uh, from the general fund. What? So who, who on the board was that when I was on the board? No. Uh, the last time we uh, funded it, I believe, was uh, would have been December, I believe, of 2014. Okay. Uh, we put. Uh, 2014. Yeah, we put uh, about a million two hundred. There was seven in there already, so it brought it up to about a million nine, and uh, and we spent it. Uh, as you see down the, the I know our road. buddy needs a roof. Excuse me? I know our buddy needs a roof. Well, I'm sorry to hear about that. Is he that, still here? No, he's gone. Uh, oh, you mean Dave? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we do have money in there specifically for roofs, earmarked for roofs. Uh, um, special reserve fund thing? Mm -hmm. That was going to be my question. So is this considered significant building maintenance? I mean, what? how is it earmarked in the special reserve? So when we put money in, we identify the number of uh, projects and the number of uh, requirements for those projects for funding. Um, uh, the biggest item uh, in there is that I think it's about $800,000, maybe about $700,000 for roofing, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, which will... Uh, which is starting to fail, and we have issues with. Um, uh, there was also about uh, three hundred thousand dollars for a new chiller uh, on top of the roof. Uh, we also had uh, money in there for the uh, patron computers and all the staff computers that we refreshed after seven or eight years of, sure. of usage. You know, so you know, from time to time, you know, we come to you and we say these are the things yeah. that. You know, we think ought to ought to happen is, um, as we all know, the board's primary responsibility, besides picking a director, is to maintain the physical plant of uh, of the library and make sure that it doesn't deteriorate. Um, uh, we've also have uh, you know other things in there for you know, parking lot uh, uh, yeah. restoration, uh, lighting restoration in the parking lot, and, uh, and things of that nature. Um, so this hasn't been earmarked yet, is what you're saying? Uh, this, so I don't, okay, so, 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 once, so once you put money in, mm -hmm. you have to have a justification, you have to do your best to look down the road. What we did right. in order to look down the road is we had a couple of surveys done of the uh, mechanicals and then of the envelope of the building mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that we had things covered. As, as you move through um, your calendar and, and your budgets, um, you know, things, things happen. Okay, so for example, one thing that happened, we put money into the Special Reserve Fund, uh, I believe uh, $50,000 into the Special Reserve Fund to buy a new van. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we had to do that after the fact, because we so, well, done right. You're right, I remember that. So, uh, our attorney, Dennis Walsh, after mm -hmm. we did that and he sat through the meeting where that, you know, where that was part of the justification, uh, informed us that you can't buy a, a van out of the special reserve fund. So we had to buy it out of the general fund. So we got a little bit of extra left in the special reserve fund. The, uh, uh, the computers that we bought, 
uh, we saved money on those computers because the price had dropped from the time that we funded the Special Reserve to the time that we actually executed and judged our, uh, you know, judged our uh, needs with a, with a, you know, with a sharpened pencil. Uh, so there's extra funds left uh, in the Special Reserve for that. Uh, and you can go on and do all sorts of accounting uh, like that. Um, so the money isn't earmarked specifically. It is a qualifying expenditure. Um, is it a qualifying expenditure? Yes. Based on it's not me. Signage. Signage is an improvements or growth. Well, improvements. I'll, I'll leave that. I'm just curious. No, I just wanted to know. I'll leave that so to it wasn't you earmarked, right but you're saying we do have some money left from this or that. Right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. So, how much? Okay. Uh, you remember from the last uh, from the last presentation by uh, Alex uh, from uh, Product uh, Total, including allowances and subcontractors, was a little over one hundred and sixty thousand uh, dollars. There was the major part was the bid from ASI, uh, which is uh, the promotion that we're talking about, one hundred twenty-three thousand dollars. There were also subcontractors. <coughs> As you see, uh, the biggest one being the parapet allowance. Um, and that's uh, primarily uh, due to the village requirement that no letters can stand above the roof line, so we have to create basically a false roof line um, in, in this particular uh, space on the front of the library. So, as I, said, as I said earlier, these were presented at the last meeting on June 21st. So, no, really, how much? And if you look at the administration's priority order, um, the first priority is replacing the lettering on the corner sign, um, which is about 5,000. Um, the uh, new sign on Oakland Court, um, including the electricity to illuminate the sign, which is about 15,000. The building um, identity on the Oakland Court side of the building for about 12. Um, the address on the canopy for about 400. Parapet sign on the Waukegan roadside, in, including the building of the parapet, 37,000. Uh, the driveway sign on Oakton Street and uh, the building, Oakton Civic Center Drive identity, uh, at about 4,000 each. The total uh, for these items is just under uh, $80,000. So. Uh, the parapet construction and electricity amounts may change due to competitive bid bidding, as you'll see later. So, what are we buying again? The first thing is the corner sign, and we're really talking just about <laughs> uh, just about changing uh, the lettering in the top part of the sign. The video screens uh, would, would stay the same. The new sign on Oakton Court would be on this corner, and and, and what I've done is I've clipped uh, I've clipped pieces out of the presentation that uh, product made last week or last month. Um, the Oakton Court building sign, yeah, I know it's upside down. <laughs> I did it on purpose because that's the orientation. Essentially, it would be to be able you know, to reflect to uh, Oakton Court. Uh, the address on the canopy. This is the, the parapet sign, which would go between the canopy and the, uh, and the rotunda um, and be in this orientation. The uh, driveway sign on Oakton Street and the building identity at Oakton uh, Civic Center Drive. Okay. So, Eighty thousand dollars is less than one hundred and sixty-two. What are we deferring? So we're deferring uh, four things: uh, the video screens on the corner, which had a cost of approximately fifty thousand um, dollars; parking lot banners and building banners, which had a cost of approximately nineteen five; uh, the extra driveway sign on uh, Oakland Court for approximately forty-three hundred, and landscaping for forty-five hundred, which. Oops, I'm sorry. Which we would accomplish. Um, Thank you. I got a little too much. Which we would accomplish uh, for less using uh, our existing 
uh, landscape and public. Anything else? Uh, we do have some initial bids uh, for the parapet work and the electrical work. Uh, the parapet work is ranging from 11000 to 19998 um, artfully under the $20,000 procurement limit uh, that triggers the Illinois, uh, state of Illinois procure procurement work rules. But uh, 11000 is about half the amount. This was, uh, this was uh, allowed at $25,000, okay? And there's a, you know, there's a key thing here. Um, yeah, we have these bids, but they haven't been fully vetted. Um, you know, so, you know, we feel that they're probably somewhat comparable, but, you know, we can't attest to that at this point. And we would uh, obviously come to the board, and, you know, once we have done that, um, should the board decide to move forward. And, uh, and then uh, we have a discussion about it. Uh, the electrical work, which was in at 9,900, is ranging from about seven and a half to almost 15,000 from what we've seen. And again, these haven't been fully vetted yet. But the interesting thing is, if the lowest bids hold, the total for the priority list would be approximately $65,000, um, which is a little less than 162. Uh, maybe about 20% uh, or 30% of the total. Uh, Questions? Okay. I have a question. Um, um, right. Alex, sir, Alex, is that his name? Mm -hmm. He mentioned that we didn't have bids for construction. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're referring to in Carapet? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. That takes care of that. I, 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 just, I was going to ask if we could have like a couple of minutes just to use the bathroom. Sure. Yeah, Thank you. A couple of people went through that. Sure. We've now had a presentation and we have the PowerPoint that you just presented in front of us right now. So I want to go to the priority order. Uh, we placed the lettering on corner side. And, and are these your priorities in the order of priority? Yes. Okay. All right, so obviously we need new lettering because our name goes... No, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I thought I was talking when we ended the meeting. Oh, okay. Wasn't I talking? Didn't I have questions? Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah so, so when I ran for the library board, I ran on keeping taxes down, getting the biggest bang for the buck for the patrons of the library. And so I hold myself true to that. I, I fully agree we've got to keep them high and dry, cool and warm. Let's, let's keep the, the outer shell work in. Let's get all the resource material, all the books, magazines, the applications. Let's get it in here. But I, I think we're stepping outside of the, the taxpayer's need for what makes a great library by getting all of this signage. You know, I've, I've come here a couple times and had a park two blocks away because we got so much going on. So obviously some people are getting here. Uh, every millennial I know is using Google Maps, maps, some sort or other. Turn here, turn here, turn here. Uh, doesn't take care of the old people, but maybe they're riding the free bus. <laughs> So uh, I just think that the total package, because of the packet, it, it, it spoke nothing about 162. So it's 123, 123, 123. And I know at the last meeting, you did a great job of getting out the presentation, which totaled everything up. And $162,000 could be used for a lot of content for the library. That's, that's what I ran on as a trustee. That's what I think the people of Niles, Maine Niles, are looking for, is, is more stuff for them to have and to use. And I think we're just, whether we go up or down 5, 10, 20% on construction materials, I think is, is immaterial. I, I think, you know, banners, I mean, there's a lot of things when I, I look back to my budget in my house, I, I don't have banners hanging on the outside of my house. Some people do. 
but I don't. Some people have been able to put up great vinyl signing. You know what? I have been able to do it because I can't afford it. You're using the taxpayer's money to make these changes. And, and banners out there, fantastic. We're doing pizza. We already got that marketed in our, our, our grand you know, magazine and, and, and everything else. We, we've got so much marketing going on. It's, it's just, it's just not, it's not fair to the taxpayer. I mean, we're just getting nickeled and dimed at every turn. And, and, and I understand your focus is, is different. You're looking at it from a different perspective. I'm trying to give you the perspective from a business perspective and from a taxpayer's perspective. And I, I think you have to put that hat on when, when you start thinking about putting signs up. I agree. That big, giant size sign needs to be out there to flash the latest and greatest stuff. I could see having a corner sign out there. you got three sides of it. Flash away. But gosh darn it, you know, if, if, I, if I've gone to the store a hundred times and I've, I've gone past it and turned around, personal responsibility. You know, something on my dime. i got to do it. i got to turn around. Oh, my. You know, I just don't think we need to be spending taxpayers' money on, on banners, signs, signs on three sides. i got an address on mine. You want to throw up the, the address up there for little numbers? Terrific. The postman can deliver the mail. But I just, again, I just, signage, it just, I, I don't have, you know, the Martins up there on, on three sides of my building. And it, it's just, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm being a little sarcastic. I apologize. It's late. I get way too much candy. Uh, but I, I'm telling you, from, from the taxpayer's perspective, I, I, I see way too much stuff. And it's, it's just nothing but, well, use that money from the reserve fund to help out the still on here. Uh, to help out with the guys rough in the coolers and the chillers. I, you know, my dad was a maintenance guy for a big condo. Stuff has to, like that has to be done. Parking lot has to be done. Lights inside. Stuff inside has to be done. Signs is a is a nice to have. A nice nice to have. And uh, thanks for listening. I, I I don't think poorly of people that are making these suggestions. I I I, I think. You're in the library, you want to make it the best space. I understand you want to make it the best space. You know, when I did my kids' room, I, I wanted to make that room the best. You know, but maybe you don't have the money to do it. And I think you need to be careful when you spend any of it. So I, I apologize for getting a little passionate about what I'm, I'm saying here. Uh, but it's just, it's, it's uh, the, my opinion, and, and as I, I, I haven't been silent as I've talked with many people within the Niles area. I've even still, I said, what's your thoughts on, on having these signs here, you know? Uh, you know, and, 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 and the, there's, they don't see a value in, in doing those signs. As, as, you know, aside from, you know, getting your corner sign up, it just makes sense. You're, you're spending, you're throwing dollars down the toilet on an old sign. But uh, it makes sense to do that. I mean, get an extension 10, 15, 20 years out of, out of that investment. And, and great advertisement. I, I come down Waukegan all the time. I just want to yeah, make thanks. sure. Cut me off, because I'll, be, I'll have you here at 10. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm sure um, you know, a lot of people have uh, things they want to say. But before we discuss it any further, I just want to ask for some clarification yeah. so, so we know what we're talking about. Um, I'm just having trouble m matching up some of these numbers here. Uh, for instance, on, on your PowerPoint, you say, replace corner sign 5,000. How does that match up to this sheet over here? I see we replace corner, renovate corner sign over here to update sign copy at 7,000 and LED signs for 50,000. So I don't, I don't understand how this is corresponding to the previous PowerPoint that we got. Where, how do these figures? Well, I, I, I came up with the figures by March, so if the, any any misstatements, I didn't have that piece in front of me when this I was piece? doing it. No, I was looking at the ASI bids this rather than analysis. This sheet, yeah, sorry. and I also had an earlier bid that broke some of the things out separately, and so I was going back and forth between the two. So I must have underestimated how much changing up the letters would be. So the, if it that's, says seven, then that's probably correct. But I was using the bid, so I'm... So we should be sure. using ASI's bid. Yeah. But 
I mean, there were places where we were doing one thing and they had combined a couple of things, so I was you know, going back and forth and back. So. so, well, in your defense, this is probably one of the worst things I've ever sat through. I can't believe we even accepted it. The presentation we had last The presentation was outrageous and this bid process after I went through it, unbelievable. I can't even read it. The bids are hard to read. I mean, the font is very small. The drive is very small. Um, and I think the presentation we had last night perhaps didn't clear up as many questions as we would like. As it may. Um, this uh, PowerPoint helped, when I got a copy of it, helped somewhat. Uh, but, but now I'm a little confused again because um, I just don't see how all these figures match up from, from one to another. Right, so on this, on the current ASI bid, it has that signed project at 56717 and so it didn't break out how much just the letters cost, but the last version of it, the original version of it, did have that broken out, so that's where I pulled it from. So, but they, they added some... So which one So the board packet. packet. Yeah. Yeah. It was yes. underneath the bid proposal form, and then it has the actual quote, and has it all broken down. What, that 7,433? Page 58. Same advice. 63. Page 63. Oh, 63. 58 and then 63. Yeah. Do I have a magnifying glass here? Yeah. 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 I brought this. Yeah. Oh, did you really? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Now, probably to keep it simple, you should stay focused on the high pocket items. You know, I, I think that, that tends to simplify things. I'm sure there's going to, I well, think there's going to be some variance you know, on some of these costs, but, but from a, a perspective of, of where the cost lies, it's, it's going to land somewhere around that final 162, you know, plus or minus. Well, but that's why we set out the priorities so that you can decide which of those things you wanted to do. If you think the banners are stupid and way too expensive, then just take it off the list. Let's just not stop talking about it right. and move on to the things that really, you know, they're things they're, we they're have not to so change good. I mean, I, well, I've no, seen them and I, nice I like banners, nice I just don't like the cost. Right. right, no, I guess, no, you said nice <laughs> to have a board. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, 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 what you guys are proposing here is on page I seven. I think you're not the only PowerPoint, which is the $79,000. Right. Yes. Or less if you, right. you know, want to put it in priority of right. what you want to do. Yeah. Right. Just wanted to clarify. So I, I, these are the what I think we, we ought to do is just go down this list and decide it. Page seven. On page seven. Let's well, what do we actually need? Right. Yeah, absolutely. We don't need all of this. Yeah, it's clear tonight. Mm -hmm. right. So what do we need to make us visible? So why, don't, why don't we focus on the corner sign to begin with? Just to just yes. as far as this corner sign is All right. So replacing the lettering on the corner sign. What exactly are we talking about? The top lettering above the LED screen, right? What's what's covered by the what's covered by the peel off right. thing yeah, right, right now, right. which is probably going to peel off in a couple of months and need to be replaced, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the actual lettering. We can change it to nothing. All right. Then what about the um, then you say, all right, so you don't have on here the new LED yeah, sign. Okay, that is right. that something that is one of your priorities, is that right? That's correct. I thought that it was something that we could put aside for now to get some of these other signs put in, which I think, you know, I think having signage on the side of the building is really important. Um, I just, that's just a standard thing. It's everywhere. And, and I know that many people know where the library is, and many people do not know where the library is. So, all right. Um, I have, go ahead, Pat. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. If, and this is what I was thinking about before, if we're just changing the letters on the sign, do we still have to go through that process with the village that's going to take the two meetings? Process. No. I don't think so. I think because it's, it's, cool. it's, we're it keeping the old so. sign. Right. But and is what it the color same? Are the, that's the same. It's not I, the same. Not, it's just changing the LED. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure same. what the uh, what the variance they're seeking is. Okay. If it's a dimensional variance, or if it's uh, if it has to do with uh, replacing the video screens, or uh, what particularly uh, the variance is. Okay, so it would depend on the village whether or not we have to go through those two meeting pro that two meeting process. Correct. Okay. But I, believe, but I 
believe the restriction primarily is on video screens that they don't want in signs anymore. So I believe oh. that would be what the variance is for. But I, Greg is right, and I could be wrong about that. It could be more than one thing. All right, so let's look at priority two. New sign in Oakton Court, including electric. All right, so there's two signs that are provided for, uh, for, uh, proposed for Oakton Court, right? Which one are you talking about? The one in the corner or the one by the driveway? Well, the, the, uh, the one on the corner, if you look um, on page... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the one that's right on the corner? Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's okay. upper, upper right, it's the bottom. It's so it's this yeah. one? This is the one, in, yeah. Okay. It's like in the parkway? Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, right in the that's corner of Barkegan and Oakland Park. That's the yes. number two. Right. Yeah, so this one here. Yeah. Yeah. See, actually, it would actually, what I did is I went through my number piece. It, it makes it a lot easier. In terms of priority, right, okay. Related to your... Yeah, to me, those are the two that I thought were the highest priority. So they are visible. All right. Then, um, number three, building open for the side of the building. So that is the sign that's actually fixed to the side of the building, is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is, again, facing open court. Yes. All right, number four, address on canopy. Oh, that's just the numbers, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Parapet sign, I think we, we talked about that. That is the higher sign where the letters would go on it. And then the driveway sign, Oakton Street, that is on the south side of the building, right? Yes. Now there's two entrances there, though. Right. Yeah, the one is yeah. one is uh, where the stoplight is. Right. Uh, this is the other entrance, okay. which is so we would just the be putting the one there. Yeah, yes. we don't actually want people turning down. Because that's more for a staff entrance. Right. Right. Okay. Right. And then finally, the Oakton Civic Center Drive. That's not the side of the building. Oh, okay, building site. Okay. Yeah. It's a building Oakton Civic Center Drive. Okay. All right. All right, so I, I just wanted to clarify a little bit to begin with. Does, does anyone else have any questions about clarification? Yeah, well, to me, the address, are we still, I mean, it was a long-term goal, but I don't know how long-term because I know there has been damage to the um, canopy. Isn't it kind of ridiculous to put the address on there until we do whatever we're going to have to do to that because of the issues with it? Yeah, well, we've been... Uh, we've been sourcing uh, repair costs for that, you know, so we wouldn't do that. You know, we wouldn't do something where we would put it up and then tear it down as part of the uh, part of the, uh, okay. the servicing. Okay. Does anyone else have any general questions or seeking? Is anyone needing any clarification? Yeah. Yes. Um, just the upkeep of the original sign that we have right now, the, the lit, what was that again? So, um, if you look closely at the sign, mm -hmm. I believe it, it's 16 individual lighted panels. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And now those panels are uh, failing. Right. Um, as a matter of fact, there's, I believe, uh, two or maybe three uh, that are out there that we haven't addressed because of this discussion mm -hmm. that we're having. And uh, uh, my recollection from the last time we replaced one, it was like $500, uh, you know, $500 plus, you know, servicing for them to come out and replace those particular uh, uh, components. Oh. And with the new one, we wouldn't have to worry if you have a 10-year warranty yeah. for the variants. I've had people tell me that they're really not that crazy about having it or something. We've got the LEDs it. are the one that's there. Then. They're the one that's there. And I know we have it, and you know, I'm not going to tear it down, but I wish we didn't have it. So, are you saying that uh, you think an LED sign would be better, or you don't I, like I, anything I, there? I, or, I, I'm I, not I sure what you're saying. Panel and just put it over the whole thing and not have to worry about maintaining it and replacing lights. And people say they, that they're, they're, they're stopped in the corner and it's too, it goes back too fast, there's not enough information. It's, 
I, I've had people tell me that it's it is not valuable to them to have that sign. You know, I've heard people actually learn what's going on at the library because of however long they're yeah. sitting at a red light. Yeah. So it is good yeah. advertising. Yeah. All right, all right. This is this is where I'd like to proceed, unless someone wants to do it another way. I'd like to go around the table, and then I'm going to start with you. Just so I'm letting you know ahead of time, so you can think about it. Uh, I'm going to ask each person to just tell the rest of the board members uh, what, if any part of these um, uh, items you would like to see um, a, a build right now. Which ones? And it, I, I'm going to ask you to use the numbers of the items which are listed uh, on the administration's priority, that is on page 7 of the handout we just used. So I'm going to ask you to use those numbers so we all are talking about the same thing. And, and if there's something not on this priority list that you really think we ought to do now, you can do that. You can say that too. I mean, for instance, if you really want to put the LED display up right now because we're spending money replacing those bulbs in the current sign, I mean, you, you can say that too. Uh, but I would like to just sort of get a feel for what items each board member um, would like to have built now. It could be all of them, none of them, some of them, whatever. And, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in the order that the administration has suggested it. I mean, you could say you like one, two, and six, or whatever. So I, I just didn't want to get a feel by doing that. So yes. Uh-huh. How much money do, do the friends have in their bank account right now? Like, 20-ish. 20-ish? Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Diane, are you ready to uh, address that? Um, okay. The corner sign. Uh, of course that needs that would be the uh, most priority. So are you saying number one there, replacing yes. the lettering? Okay. Yeah. So, so the, the lettering is, is up at the top, right? Right, mm -hmm. right. Just that hard. And the lettering now is white. Well, those, right now there's that sticky on top and, of it. Yeah, and that's going to probably peel off pretty soon, in a few months. Is yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. need you know, lettering. Okay. Yeah, and, and actually in the evening, uh, you can you can see the light, the old letter shining through. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's, uh, it works as well as the sun is up late. Yeah. <laughs> Which won't be that much longer. Yeah. Okay. okay. Court is. Mm -hmm. All right, Dan. Sign coming from the north. Is that what Oakland Court is? It would be the one. Is that uh, the sign that would show you where Oakton Court is when you're coming down the street from the, the north? Town, it. That's number two. Yeah. It's number two. I know it's here which one is it? That's this one right here. This one. Yeah. Yeah. The number I'm two not sound sure is that on a pole or is it? Yeah, yeah, that's how they run. That's how they Kind of like the Emerson sign when you're yeah, around. Yeah, I think we need that. Building, uh, open court side of building. Well, by that time you should know where you are. Driveway sign is where? Right it's here. turning into right uh, it's West Street. Oakton. So if you're coming from the east going west, it, it marks where the library uh, parking lot is. Okay. okay. Um, okay, I have number one, two, six, and seven. Okay. I think those are the priorities for me. Okay, thank you very Doesn't much. Doesn't mean not to have... Right, and you know, I just want to mention that if uh, if we decide to do some certain items tonight, uh, Diane, 
I just want to make sure you understand. We decided to do some things tonight that doesn't foreclose us doing others at a later date. Sure. But this is what we're addressing right now. So right now you're voting for these are priorities. Your would be your priorities. Not that you're voting for it, but that they're right. your priorities. One, two, right. six, and seven. Okay, Patty, what right. do you think? Uh, I would go one, two, three, and seven. Okay. Carolyn? Are we talking any costs along with these two? Well, uh, we're just looking at the costs as, as shown on the printout that we have here. Because it, it's, it's nice to be able to pick things out when you're not fixing costs to it. But, but we're, we are, we're we're looking looking at the costs. Costs. Okay. we are looking at the costs here. All right. Severe thunderstorm warning has been for your location. For us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been raining pretty good. Well, I believe doing this set up with Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they said, yeah, I On the news this right. morning, they said it would be done by midnight. Let's hope so. Let's so okay, okay. I, I hate <laughs> to, <laughs> to do this, but I have a hard time picking from this list because I wasn't pleased with the whole bidding process that only one person submitted. And I also kind of came, it caught me off guard because I wasn't paying attention. If we actually paid somebody, Greg, I thought you were doing all this until I met Mr. What's-His-Name, and I was not impressed with him. He didn't know what he was presenting. His pricing was all over. But here's my point. I can't pick from a list that only one person submitted pricing. And he told us that the reason the other people didn't submit, they just all dropped out at the last minute. Well, that's not really true. The first thing, if, if you know anything about bids, when 10 people do not submit a bid, there's something wrong with the bid process. So I have a hard time even just going through all of this. And I'll be honest with you, I called some of the other bidders today, and they are interested. And some of them had issues. But I'm, I mean, we're talking about a sign that doesn't have any lighting, but we're going to pay for lights to go in front of it. I mean, it, it, it's almost like nonsensical. Why don't we just go to a, a, a vendor or a manufacturer who builds a sign with a light in it? I mean, we're, we're actually picking something that we, I don't think we have any right to even look at. So I, I can't say I'm pleased with any of this. Plus, I'm still exploring the fact that Oakton and Waukegan are state roads, so you can't put up signs. But Milwaukee, if Milwaukee's a state road, the mayor put up signs. So maybe he could help us get signs that say Niles Library with an arrow. And we don't have to pay for half of this stuff. This is quite costly. And I have to say it's not something I feel is critical. So do you want to vote for uh, So I sort of don't want to vote for anything. OK, all right. Uh, Linda. OK, um, for me, I like everything except for the uh, the building number three. So you uh, one, two, four, five, six, and seven. Yes, and I thought then we could also ask the friends if we wanted the banners if they have money in. Okay. Right. That we well, that's a different issue. We can, we right. can do that. Why, I'm just curious why you don't like three. Um, I kind of who made the comment that once you get to there, you should know that you're at the miles. I see. Diane, did you yeah. say that? Yeah. Like once you, I mean, you pass that one sign, the signs, then you turn should turn know that you're at the Niles Public Library. Yeah, right. Like if you actually see that corner sign, uh -huh. then you should. I mean, I, I like I like it, but I'm saying if it's a priority. And if we're actually doing a true priority, then I would say we definitely need one on the um, on the uh, Oakton? Oakton side because there's nothing there. We definitely need something on the Waukegan side. They have, we want something on that frontal. We want a, something that's you know, really states who we are. And, and um, so you think by that you're talking about the parapet, is that right? Yes. Yeah. And I just think it just looks fantastic. And then, um, but if I had to go away with anything, that would be the one thing that would be like, mm, you know, if we got the banners or something later too, we wouldn't necessarily I thought, we need that. Okay. You know, we have other things too that kind of highlighted. Oh, Jesus. 
listen to that. Okay. Uh, Dennis, do you, do you want to address a, no, sure. I don't know how you feel in general, but if you yeah, yeah. address the, yep. the numbers here. So, so, so I too feel the bidding process is flawed. Uh, I just finished an RFP for uh, a company that, uh, that I worked for, and uh, we had six, six vendors that we are, sent it out to. If, if I had five people drop out of there, I, I would be extremely concerned, and I would not go with you know, I would go send it back out, uh, try to find out what we want. Uh, that aside, if, if we're not going to go out and, and get another, uh, a, you know, redo the bid, um, I, I would say that, you know, I, I truly have been on open, and, and I've stopped there, and I, I've caught some things there, uh, you know, about what's going on. So I, I can see the sign being there. Uh, it's a lot of money, you know, but I think it, it, it does tell the story. Uh, you have the signage, the, 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 the name on top, so you've got to replace the, the, uh, the lettering on top of it. Uh, but uh, aside from that, I, I think uh, everything else is, uh, is uh, a nice to have. And, and the corner signs are nice to have. I, I just, at about 10 to 10, I keyed in on my maps, uh, you know, the library, as the main library, and it came right up. So I can now know how to get there. So I'm asking for your numbers. Uh, whatever, whatever it is for this this corner sign here, but plus the, the, the lettering on top. Well, all right. So you say plus. So are you well, saying you want the well, LED lighting? Yeah, the LED lighting, and oh. I think there's numbering up on top. The or lettering on top that identifies it all the time. I think you have to have it. You know, you know, it's a lot of money, but you got to have something out there that okay. makes you. Uh, no okay. And I did say I did also want the LED lights. Okay. All right. All right, Tim. All right. Uh, we absolutely have to do number one because that's our, our main step to change. Um, I I like the sign on number two on the Oakton Court in Waukegan. Uh, I'm with Carolyn on that. Maybe we it can be self lit or. Does it even need lighting? Can we do fluorescent uh, lettering or something, you know, uh, that nature? Uh, just to understand, the whole, uh, the whole issue is getting electricity to that particular yeah, Correct. Location. I know. Right. Solar panel. Well, I, I thought that too. You know, <laughs> I've got to solar my lights and solar panels. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. that will trouble some right. yes. electricity for yes. the water. Right. <laughs> God, no. um, number four for 400 bucks. Yeah. Go and do um, And number six. Uh, I, I do not agree with the fifty thousand dollars for an LED light at this time. It seems like a lot of money to spend for something we've already got, and if we can replace the existing lights as piecemeal. Um, uh, but I'm absolutely in agreement with everybody else about the bidding process. Uh, I, I, what I would like to see here is that we create our priority list and then maybe go out and bid again uh, with a new list. Of So I have one, two, and no LED lighting. Is that yeah, what you said? Right. Four, and, and, and yeah, I'm sorry. One, two, four, six. And six, right. One, two, four, six. Uh, and I, I did agree with Patty. I think um, the awning, if we have to do renovation on the awning, maybe we, that needs to be combined with number five. Maybe that's a better um, synergy with that. I don't know. Uh, Putting it on the parapet sign? Is that a parapet? It's where so, we have so, to so because it's about the, the no. roof yeah, line, so we have to. And, 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 and I can say this: well, we can't put it on the front of that. No, that, no, that was the original plan. It would only be twelve thousand dollars if we could do that, but the village won't let us. Would let us do that. Well, the village here. Oh, then you have more than you do. Wish I knew somebody that worked. Disappointed about the bidding process, but I'd like to hear again uh, what was the explanation that we got as to why we didn't get more bids. I think we got an explanation. Well, I, I called him today to say if we took this up. And when you say he, I called Dan Port this okay. morning. I said if we took this up to bid a second time, would we get more bids? And he went and he looked at the answers that we got, and he came back and said, you know, one person said that if he had a little more time, he might have done it, but he didn't think that was 
necessarily true. The other ones would have the opportunity if there was some element in the bid that they didn't deal with, they could have just exited out and bid on the rest. So he didn't. He he thinks that my theory is correct, but this is just a really small project that most people don't want. That's not true. They'll, those were the comments I got when I oh, called. That's them today. what Dan says. So I called each bidder said. and okay. got their comments. So that's not true. Okay. But who's Dan? Is he with Dan? Is, Dan is our architect. Yeah, we, okay. We, we hired. You know, remember we uh, we had bids for right. the consulting right. process from, from Product Architecture and Lakota Group. The board voted to go with Product Architecture. So Dan is the consultant mm -hmm. on this project, and this is and first they put together the bid packet. So theoretically, the board actually said at that time, we want all these signs, and we're going to ask people to bid on them. So I mean, we really shouldn't have asked for all these signs if we didn't weren't serious about getting yeah, exactly. them. Exactly. Well, I have another question, I, and, and it, unless I misunderstood, ASI, the one company who bid, according to Alex Krug, he got their bid in January? We didn't go out to bid till May. But they're the ones that established what the baseline cost would be. Dan worked with ASI to begin. They why would, one, why would one bidder be part of that element? It amazes me. Well, I mean, you generally do work with some contractor to sort of say your Not someone who's on the bidding list. Okay. No. I can't speak to that. It's no, I'm just saying why I find experience. this whole process is so awry, unbelievable. Yes, I, we should have had more than one bid. Well, it looks like you gave it happened. to ASI. Well, I don't want you to feel bad. I feel bad yeah. for you. Over well, there. no, like, no, 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 no. It's not your fault. You didn't. Yeah. It wasn't uh, our staff that you know. No. So oh no, and I'm not is. saying that. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not saying that. I feel bad. Yeah. But I, I just in good conscience. Well, I mean, I, I keep hearing the dismay about the bids. I, I you know, I certainly hate to do this because I don't want to delay this project anymore. But uh, does anyone want to make a motion to set it out for bids again? Well, we, we need like to that. establish a good bid. Pardon? We need to create a bid that more people will bid on. I mean, you need to listen to why some of the people didn't bid. She's right about one thing. I know there was some concern about some cement border, something that has to be on one of the signs, which isn't oh, it's the custom work. work. It's the parapet work that this village is insisting on that's, that's maybe throwing some of them off. It's on the building, though. Yeah, right. I'm talking yeah, about yeah. a sign that stands. Somebody told me that in the specs, with I can't seem to get my hands on the specs. I don't know what he was talking about. That's why I sent you an email. Where are the specifications? Because they weren't in anything you gave us. It just says sign number one, sign number two. I wanted to know what is it made out of, what size does it need to be. You know, that's fine. Anyway, so no, but they, some of them, one person, and there is one person who said this is their busiest time of year, and that's why if you had more time, you would have been on it. Someone else told me they would have been on the one sign with the lights, but you, you need, I, I, I mean, they all had a reason. So I, I guess if you send it out to bid, you don't want to send the same thing out to bid. One person, I will admit, I would not have picked him. He thought our bond amount was too low, was too high. So I thought, well, we certainly don't want him. But he was the only person. But I, I don't know how much, how much time you want to put into this, but it's a lot of money going to one person who, steer, who seemed to have steerheaded the whole project. It doesn't even look right. Well, I don't know, but what I'm hearing is that from even from you, Carolyn, it doesn't really sound like we're going to get any more bidders. If we you have to send out a bid that is appealing, and whatever this, whatever the problems were, we need to get rid of that. I, I don't know how to make it an appealing bid. Exactly. Uh, well, we have a village right across the street. Well, I think when you see the Lakotas bid, you're going to see that that's what. That's, that's like a million dollar signage project. You're going to see. Really no, no, I'm quotes. saying we have inspectors and experts at the village that could have helped us through this process before we well, paid. Did we pay, what's his name, $3,500? Is that our, is that our plats? What did we call him? A survey? There's something called signage survey. Is that what we paid him? No, that went to the surveyor company. So we had a surveyor come out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we still have to pay. Well, okay. yeah, the village requires a surveyor. Okay. I wasn't sure, you know, because that those bids were not, were in general terms, not specific names. All right. Well, I All right, said so, enough. That's so, point. in any event, um, I just want to, you know, we get, make sure everyone's okay with this. Um, I sort of think that we're not going to get any better bids, but if anyone wants to make a motion that we rebid it, um, now's your opportunity to make that motion. Um, 
But if I don't hear a motion, then we do need to address the bids that we have received. Either well, we're going to accept I think, I think, part or all of it or not. I think um, it would be great if we had a motion, but Greg, you know who would it go to? Who, do you, who are your sources? I don't know. I'm sorry? Who would, who would you contact if we wanted to rebid it? I mean, do you have any options? If he doesn't, maybe we should just put the whole thing in the rest until we can do it right. What's the big hurry? We only need to change big hurry. the hurry. We've been doing this since 2015. I mean, it's well, not yeah. hurry. How many people going around the block? They don't want to Well, but we changed the name of the library. Isn't that part of why we waited this, this point? We did. Because we right. knew we were changing the name. Well, 5,000 to 162,000. No need to worry about the weight. No, so, so it wasn't 5,000. For the change of words the words on the side. The words on the corner sign yeah. was 5,000. So, so yeah, if we were to go out for another bid, we would have to work with your, with the, the library consultant, correct? Continue the process, right? I, do, I believe so. We're, yes. Well, I think we have to consult our lawyer on this at this point. That's what we've chosen. Yes. And so I'm just trying to understand the process. And, and, and so you would, it's not that you would send it anywhere. So it's just, a, if, if we were to go out for another bid, the process would be for, for somebody to go back to the consultant, to work with that consultant, he would get an additional fee to continue his process. Uh, he would then pull together another RFP. It would then go out to the newspapers, more money to go ahead and put it out in the newspapers. It would go out on the library site. Then people would then have the same opportunity to bid. Uh, it's not understood by me yet. Do uh, are, are we going to go out with the exact same bid? Or are we going to you can't do it the exact same bit. That would not be legally barred. Okay. So it would have to have the so, significant so, so, change. So, 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 you, you actually okay. asked for all the information so that you could give it to a vendor. Yeah, I did. And, and, and I'm assuming, I, I never handed anybody information. So what, what I did is I, well, I, guess, I, 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 asked, I asked Susan first. Right. I says, when is it going to go in the paper? Because yeah. I says, I have the information. It would not be fair for me to send any information out to any vendor. Oh, good point. So, so I did not send anything out. I wanted people to have the opportunity. I talked with people, said, hey, you know, this is going on. I talked with other people within Maine Township and the Village of Niles, and hey, this is going on. Look at the site, look in the paper. I had, I had no idea, I was surprised that there was only one <laughs> there yeah. left. So I, I, I drop it at that. I'm a trustee, and I don't want to be... No, no, I don't I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, any, not, I'm not suggesting any yeah. malfeasance yeah. or, or yeah. anything of that, yeah. but uh, you know, just drawing a connection that yeah. you know, I did, everybody around the table wants to know why we only got one bid, and you know, yeah, I thought I, you had a connection. That, well, I, I hit more than one, so, yeah. but I did not go back to them and say, hey, why? You know? Were any of them on the, uh, on the list in the motion? Uh, you know, I didn't. I didn't look at the list, so I, I didn't. I didn't realize that there was, we had that list. Yeah. Oh, I embedded it right in the oh, I'm sorry. Uh, right in the motion. I mean, I, I'm just wondering. Okay. Yeah. So I'll. Uh, is, that, is there a page number on that? Yeah, uh, 56. Yeah. Uh, ASI centers. Uh, data media. Omega sign. Uh, correct digital displays. Classy signs. Direct letters. Coding. Continental construction, crescent, crescent detail, uh, decal, design group. Yeah, the two people, the two people I know, uh, you know, they, they weren't the same people, so I do know somebody that uh, uh, well connected within the village of Niles, and I talked with him. I'm assuming he went to that other company, so. Not but none of those companies are. I, I, I don't know of, of any of those companies. And, and the other person I went to is, I went to this other person, that person went to these people and said, yes, they were going to be interested in bidding. Again, not knowing you know, those people, or at least uh, their, their, their names, I, I have no clue. I would have to follow up with it, but you know, now that I have it, I can do that. You know, just for right. my own point of interest. Okay, all right. I just want to sort of move things along here. It's, it's been pretty late. Um, <laughs> I just want to say that at this point, as I look at the numbers I wrote down here, it appears to me, if I've kind of right, that a majority of the board members would support going ahead with items one, two, six, and seven at this time. 
And therefore, I'd like to know if anyone would like to make a motion for us to proceed with the work as outlined in numbers one, two, six, and seven. I, I, would, I would like to see a cost of that total of doing one, two, six, and seven. Well, I, I think it's here. Well, I know it's here, but it, it, I mean, if we're going to we're going to motion or vote on it now, yes. I, I yes. Do we want to take the time to total it all up? I, I'd well, be happy to hear the number. Uh, well, does that include everything? It's about $30,000. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody wants to include the $400 for the address? Uh, the only reason I, I wouldn't vote for that is just because I think we're going to replace the canopy. I don't know if I'm going to replace well, the canopy. Well, so we're not replacing the canopy. There are uh, leakage issues with the uh, copper sheeting on the, uh, uh, on the canopy, and we're soliciting bids to uh, fix the copper or uh, replace it with some, something else that preserves the standing All scene. right. Well, all right, I will ask, does anyone want to make but, a motion to... But I think, we need, I think we need an address on the building for police and fire at a minimum. All right, okay. Does anyone want to make a motion to proceed with the work as indicated by numbers 1, 2, 4, 6, and 7 at this time? Do I have a motion? Second. Second. Okay. Um, actually, what that is is that would be, I presume, an amendment of the motion on the table because we actually did have a motion to approve the whole thing to start off. So, who is the motion in the secondary? Uh, it was Linda and Patty. Okay, do the two of you accept that uh, amendment to your motion to cut Fine. back Fine. what we're approving at this time? Items one, two, four, six, and seven, as indicated on page seven of the PowerPoint we got this evening. All right. Could, could, um, could someone show me on the, the screen? You know, I just uh, or maybe Tim can point it out to me quicker and in here to show me where and what we're going to sure. think about doing here. Okay. You place the lettering on the corner sign. So that's up at the top here, right? That's right on the corner. And that's number one? That's yeah. number one. Look at, look at page seven and you'll see. Yeah. That's page, the number I'm referring to. Yes, it does. That's got them all. Okay. So number one is Number one is this. There. Number two is number this. Number two. This. Number four is that guy. Number four is the, the little address. Little, little address. The $400. Okay. Okay. Number six is the driveway sign. Six. And number seven is seven. the building sign on Oakton. Okay, unless there are other further questions, I will ask for a roll call. Okay. To, to proceed with the work on one, two, four, six, seven, right? Yes. Is it indicated on page seven of the PowerPoint presentation? Okay. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Dennis. No, I'm sorry. Diane. Yes. Patty. Mm -hmm. Yes. Linda. Yes. Tim. Yes. Okay. All right. So that uh, takes care of that item. Uh, we're now at um, other. Uh, Carolyn, did you want to discuss PowerPoints? Um, I, I had a question about what you wanted exactly. I would like the copy All right. of any PowerPoint presentation before the meeting, which would mean it would be in our package. All right. Well, okay. This this is what I wanted to bring up because I don't think it's quite you know as simple as that all the time. I, for, for instance, Why is it not simple? Everything oh, Carolyn, is so complicated. Carolyn, at this can library. I finish my sentence, please? Sure. Thanks. Um, tonight, Greg gave us a PowerPoint right here, and um, I thought it was useful to have it, um, and I'm glad we had this additional PowerPoint. And I didn't want to not have it, maybe because it wasn't done last week when the packet came out to us. <laughs> you know, it's nice to get it as soon as possible, but I'd rather get it than not get it. So that's why I don't necessarily want to prohibit 
uh, our staff from using a PowerPoint if they haven't already given us a copy. Um, I do appreciate um, getting a paper copy of it that I can take home with me. Um, that's nice to have. But we don't. We haven't always had that, but this is nice to have. But I, I'm afraid that requiring that we get it ahead of time is going to essentially tell our staff, if you haven't done it a week ahead of time, you can't do it at all. That's you not know. true. Well, yeah, it is. No, it's not. Let's be mature yes, it about it. Well, yeah, that's what you are telling them. Go ahead. Um, the presentation be, should be presented by the person who created it so they can have an insight and tell you the actual reasoning why they put it together. PowerPoint usually has little snippets, and then there's a lot more attached to it. But PowerPoint never has the full information within it. That's a purpose of a PowerPoint. I would be so fine to have that. it beforehand is actually not giving us enough information and will actually open up too many questions. No, no, that's your opinion. If you don't want to do it, it's fine. It's it's we can just adjourn and not do it. The village doesn't have a problem. Can I have another question? Yes, please. Are we voting on anything else? Because people just speak first before they heard everyone's reasoning. Are we... Are we voting on anything else, like Joaquin's sign? Or like, oh, um, well, if, if anybody wants to make a motion regarding the other signs, they can do so. Um, just based on my survey of the table, I'm not sure if there's enough votes to uh, approve those signs, but anyone can make a motion regarding that if they wish to do so. And, and I could be wrong. I mean, there could be enough votes for that, uh, for other components. Once something is voted on, can we never vote on it again? No, 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 no. I think I said okay. at the beginning that the, what the motion is is what we're going to do, what we voted to do now. Okay. What we are approving now. All right. Well, I would like to make a motion for doing the parapet sign number five, the Waukegan Roadside. I just feel that that is our main library sign. I just, so I would like to make a motion. I'm not sure how that would go on the table. Okay. Time. All right. Fine. Uh, is there a second to that motion? Um, okay, I think it fails for lack of a second at this time. That, that doesn't mean you can't make it again at, at, in the future, though. Um, are there any other motions yeah. that anyone wants? Uh, I do have another. I think we need to take a look at our bylaws, especially for the new change, which needs to be Bring that next month. Yeah, I agree. Okay, right. I think that's sort of a technical change we do have to uh, address. That's true. Um, and um, I think that's good to take care of that because I think you were going to provide us with new copies of the bylaws yes. and everything anyway. Okay. Um, all right, are there any other matters that anyone wishes to bring up? All right. I don't think we have any need for an executive session tonight, is that correct? Okay. I do have a motion to adjourn then. So, Maddie? Second. Aye. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Big shoulder. Big shoulder.